Good afternoon and welcome to Kowloon Cricket Club for the Cricket Hong Kong Sunday Cha Saturday Championship League One final. It is KCC Tartars versus Hong Kong Cricket Club Nomads. Aaron Bush with you, joining me in commentary today. It's Matt Botters Botfield. Botters big final today, mate. Yeah, huge, absolutely huge. Tartars top of the table. Nomads defending champions. Fought their way into the grand final with a win in the last round. Got over the top of the gap ramblers. Gives them a chance to defend their title today. News is Tartars won the toss, but elected to bowl first, Bushy. Yep, interesting call, but... I'm shocked, to be honest with you. Yeah, a few gasps when we heard the news at 12.30. Tartars have decided to have a bowl, but it's a pitch out there that if they can get early wickets and break that top four or five of uh, the Nomads, then the Tartars will be right in this. Yeah, there's no doubt about it. I mean, it's a stage is set for a Niaz Ali special, I suppose you could argue, but... On the flip side, if the top four get away, they can take the way take the game away from the Tartars very early. So, still surprised I would have batted, but just to see what happens. Rosby and Voice out there. What well, Voice is going to take strike? They get underway a little early here. First delivery of the Saturday Championship final. And it's a full toss and just eased onto the offside to start with. A loosener from Gullum. Well described, a real loosener. Slip, gully in place. Thirty-five over game today for the Saturday Championship final. Top of the table, Tartars. That one's full as well. Popped up, hit straight back. First wicket falls after two balls, and that is a huge wicket, Botters. Oh goodness me, Luke Voice couldn't be more disappointed with that. That wasn't a good ball from Gullum. It was a full toss. He's just somehow scooped it. He didn't get the timing of it right, and he's just scooped it straight back to him. The easiest court and bowl you're likely to see. Watch on the replay. It was full. It swung, but he's just popped it straight back. That is the easiest of court and bowls you'll ever likely see to get this final underway. Oh, he'd be terribly disappointed in a big grand final. Voice all fired up for a big score, and... That was just a regulation full toss that he didn't get the timing right and he played it out in front of his eyes and just scooped it straight back to the bowler. Massive breakthrough for the Tartars early. Lucky wicket, you've got to say, for them. And I've said it a couple of times already, but boys will be so disappointed with that. The Nomad's none for one. The ball hasn't hit the pitch yet. No, it hasn't. No. A couple of fullies to open with. And George Loop now with the orange boots coming out. Hard to recognise. George with his fancy orange shoes. Both these two out there now have scored a lot of runs this year for the Nomads. Rossley especially is number three on the Saturday rankings. This one's on the pitch and just dribbles it onto the offside. We're going to run through the teams as well, Botters. Start with KCC. See Gullam Iqbal with the ball in hand. Samad Khan, Ahan Trevetti, Devang Bolsara, Farooq Saeed, Mitch Shah, Niaz Ali, Shahi Samir, Karen Lungani, Vishal Sharma, and the wicketkeeper today, Will Walsh, into the action just there. Pushing it down the leg side there, umpire Shoy Vashan calling it a wide. The first run on the board, but the first two rotate the strike, and first time we see Matt Rosley on strike today. Danger man. Then the big danger man coming in next, I would suggest Sahal Malvin Carr. He's quite the top order. Electing to bowl so far. It's been a good choice for the Tartars. Well, good luck and good management. Rossley looking confident there already. First ball faced, very confident. 
end of the over, I'll take you through the Hong Kong Cricket Club Nomads team. I already know three of them with that early wicket. Consultants on stats, spotters, you are. You get some stats on Matt Rosley's Saturday Championship as well. I know I've said his name a lot. Oh, and that one's got through. Ooh. Nice Yorker length. Didn't get down on it, Rosley. No damage done. Gullam again. Punched at the leg side from Rossley. Oh, misfield. Shahi Samir there. Just overran it. Get through for one. First runs off the bat for the Nomads at the end of the over. One over done. They're one for three. Just going through the Nomads team. Akash Shah, Aryan the Iceman, Chanda Romani, Connor Hickey, Dan Crowther, Daniel Klein, George Loop out there at the moment. Luke Voice was out there for two balls. Mark Farmer. Uh, the gloves behind the stumps. Matt Rossley, Salhal, Malvin Carr, Toby Brown. And, um, yeah, we're saying what a good season Rossley's had. He scored 374 runs in this league and an average of 46.75, third highest. On the leaderboard, of course, for KCC, the top leading run scorer for the Saturday Div 1 is Samad Khan, 537 at 41. He's obviously he's played a lot more games than Rossley. He's played the 15 games, being a junior. He's also played a lot of Crusaders games as well as Tartars games. So, Rossley's had a fantastic season, and the Nomads will be looking for him for a big score today. See Niaz Ali coming into the attack, extremely dangerous. Will Walsh up to the stumps, Bushy. The left arm up, Niaz Ali to Matt Rosley. Seizes it onto the leg side, start with a dot. It's the sort of situation that is just made for Niaz. He'll be so fired up. Anything that hits anywhere on the pads, he'll just be going up for straight away. Been bowling very well in the Saturday Championship. Yes, off the short run up, but generates plenty of speed. Leaves that one alone. It's a little bobble from Will Walsh, but keeps it to another dot. Back of a length there, and Rossley just smashes it through the offside. Is it going to run all the way? It is. Beautiful shot from Rossley. Niaz Ali just a little bit short there. Rossley full advantage. Bushy, just looking at this KCC team sheet. Yeah. Darshan Shah is 13th man. Now, if I'm not mistaken, he took four wickets last week and tore the heart out of you know, the Gap Ramp. Yeah, I recall that. It's got to be very unlucky. I think so. Niaz resets. This one's just guided straight to point. No run. Full pushed. Onto the leg side, they'll get through for a single. Every run at the moment being applauded from the Nomads dugout to our left. Yeah, so Tana's last game was against the Gap Ramblers. Darsh and Shah's bowled seven overs, three maidens, four for 14 and been dropped. Tough yeah, school. That, that is <laughs> very tough. I saw him in the playing list released on KCC social media and I immediately assumed he was a shoe in to the 11 but not today you win the toss and bowl and leave out the bloke who's taken four for 14 in the last game one ball remaining in the second and that gets through as well nice ball from niaz puts a hand up in appreciation of his own delivery and after two the nomads eight for one
Yeah, Loop's just got to be patient. I mean, Neo's Ali, he's going to beat you. He's going to get by the bat at times. There's no doubt about it. You've just got to stay patient. He'll probably bowl a four or five over spell from that end first off. You want to see him off. He's bowling from the clubhouse end. Gulen with the new ball from the bowling club end. Got a wicket with a pie in his first over. Drifting down leg side. Wide. Goodness me. Rossley's just spooned that back to Gullum. Who's just put it down? It should have been taken. It should have been the second court and bowled. That's almost easier than the first in the book. Yeah, Rossley on how many? Not many. Six, I think. Put down. That's a huge drop chance. Yep. Rossley on six. Can't give a man like Matt Rosley a chance like that. Popped up on him as well, had to drop the hand off it. Just wonder if the wicket's a bit too paced out there. I know the first court and bowl was off a full toss, so that's not relevant, but that one there, Rosley just seemed to push through. Just went straight back to Gula Mikbal, who just dropped it. Again, full up, that pops up in the air as well, but safely. Just the deep right of the square leg fielder, Ross McDonald. Then full over so far, and we're only halfway. Yeah, again, that sort of shot just makes me think it may be a little bit too paced, the pitch out there. The other thing about sending a team in, historically the wicket, hey, not better at Carolina Cricket Club. Seen a lot of that this year. Loop on strike now. Yet to get off the mark. Crunches that one hard, but can't beat mid off. He was just really flat batted down the ground. One just eased to the point region. Another dot. It's a tidy over from Gullum, but that drop catch. How costly will it be? Now Zali in first slip to Vung Balsara around the gully. Hans from Fetty back with point. Shahid Samir in front of point. Baruk Saeed in the covers. Well, with the loop, guides it to that gully region. Devang Bolsara does a good job on the first bounce, keeps it to another dot, and that's the end of the third. The Nomads 10 for one. Yeah, George Loop yet to trouble the scorers. Won't be worried about that at all at this point in time, just looking to build a partnership after the loss of the early wicket. Niaz Ali to continue from the pavilion end. First over none for five. That one's hit through the gully region as well. A great diving effort there. Shahi Samir there, absolutely beautiful. The 
just threw himself to the left. Great piece of fielding. Saved four runs. There's no third. One back on the boundary, so definitely save four. And slower one from Niaz, moving away from the left-hander. Ali Rosley this time he'll get runs on the leg side yeah, it's just the three fielders on the leg side for the left-handed Rosley one of them smart Khan was back at a deep square leg one of the fielders outside the circle that's the right-handed loop Will Walsh remains up for Niaz Ali Fifteen-year-old keeper. He's coming off a concussion from his under-19s tour. It was quite well. nasty, Bushy. Yeah. Keeping up to the spinners, and of course the batter swung around going for a pull shot and cleaned Will Walsh straight up in the helmet. And I think this is his first game back since that injury from the under-19s tour, maybe ten days ago. Yeah, maybe maybe his second. Okay. Yeah, he's trying to swing it back into the right-handed loop. Gets an edge, a big, thick leading edge between gully, backward point, and get through for a single. Yeah, just run off the face of the bat there and play some territory inside the circle. There's no third man. He was trying to run it, run it down there. One ball left in the fourth. Full, he's runs on the leg side, so Rosley gets another single in the book. And after four, the Nomads are 13 for one. Yeah, and that's not going to worry the Nomads at all. The run rate's just a tick over three, but they've just got to build that partnership after the loss of the early wicket. I'll try to do that for the next few overs. And look to capitalise later on as far as run rate's concerned. Plenty of batting in this Nomads lineup, so it's a matter of not losing any more wickets early, nullifying the danger of Niaz Ali. You say with no Darshan Shah in the side for the Tartars today, see off the two openers, Iqbal and Niaz Ali. Still got options as far as the quicks are concerned. Shahi Samir, Devang Balsara, Samad Khan, if you want to use him. And then plenty of spin options as well. Captain Bishop Sharma, Han Trivedi, of course, and Mitch Shah. There's bowling options everywhere for Tartars. Iqbal continuing from the bowling club end. Oh, and it gets good movement. Flicks the batter that there, Rosley, lucky not to get an edge. These two are racking up the dot balls, Iqbal and Niaz Ali. Remembering Rosley was dropped last over, caught and bowled, caught and dropped bowled. Solid, solid there. Yeah, very. They take their time, the Nomads. Well, again to Rosley. Rosley pushes it back along the ground to the bowler this time. Very overcast down here at Kowloon Cricket Club. It's not, uh, not the most pleasant day. Temperature's okay. Yeah, at least it's Looks not cold. Probably 19, 20, something like that, I suppose. I'll go find out for you, Bottas.
very pleasant 21.3. Halfway through this over, three dots. That one's eased on the leg side. They do have protection down at fine leg. So get through for another single. And Taran Longani down there. Doing a run from fine leg to third, depending on whether it's... Oh, no, they're bringing around a fine leg for the right-hander as well. Nice crowd build up on the balcony. Carlin Cricket Club Clubhouse. Big grand final. Loop on strike now. Just the one so far. Goes high, goes aerial, one bounce. Oh, very close to carrying to mid off. Yeah, he's looking for that gap between cover and mid off. Didn't find it. Hit it straight at mid off and moment it looked like it was going to carry but it fell well, well short and fielded on the on the bounce the one bounce it's not a big gap in this targeting he gets it through it'll run away down to shipping containers to storage containers one ball left in the fifth and left alone this time just outside off dot ball just the one run coming from the fifth for the nomads they're 14 for one He's looking at the Hong Kong there. In the biggest run, second over, five, wicket in the first. It's been good tight bowling from the Tartars openers. Patience being shown by the Nomads after the loss of the early wicket. And for those of you not familiar, you may think it's called the Manhattan. We don't call it the Manhattan any longer. We call it the Hong Kong, given there's 50% more high-rise buildings in Hong Kong than there is in Manhattan. And cricket's not exactly big in Manhattan anyway. <laughs> this is true. Neo Zali to continue from the pavilion end. Pushed it's wide of mid-off, and they run through for another single. Yeah, well-taken single there. Left-right-hand combination, it's important. They try to turn the strike over as much as possible. Niaz Ali, very happy, bowling to the right-hander, trying to get that swing back in. The ball moving through the air. Loop solid. Just pushed into the offside. Good piece of fielding, Bolsara there. just having a word to Ali I think about potentially getting a bit close to the danger zone and his follow through that's short that's cut it's straight to Samad Khan in front of point slow start for loop can't get frustrated Ali's going to shift it to around the wicket now really hone in and target those stumps. That's short, that's pulled into the leg side. He didn't get all of it, it's more top edge than anything else, but it's running away, all the way across. It's gonna go for four, it is. That lifts the run rate for loop, he goes to five. on the replay here going around the wicket trying to whip it around through square almost but popped up in the air over the top of mid wicket full this time gets through perhaps will Walter on the pads He's just throwing it up there, trying to get that movement through the air. There was a little bit, not enough.
Campbell again. Gets bat on ball this time. Quick run, diving effort from Devon. Can't cut it off. Six runs off the sixth. The Nomads, 20 for one. Taking their time, establishing a platform here. Luke picked up the boundary off the short ball from Ali before. Rossley on 11. Just trying to nullify these openers and rebuild after the loss of the early wicket on the second ball. See the run rate there. All the threes. Only the one wicket lost so far into the seventh. Bow is racking up the dot balls. Ball, driven, will get at least one, should be just one, and it is, rotating the strike. It's the left-handed Rossley back on strike, 11 off 20. Slip out. Oh, it's just sort of a fly gully back on the circle. Gulam into Rossley. Shuffles forward. Straight to the fielder. That's good running between Loop and Rossley. Home safely. Yeah, excellent running that. Left, right hand. Turning it over. We say how important that is. Good look. Loop this time just eases it back to the bowler. By Sharoy Vasher. Signals two more balls remaining in the seventh. It's been tight here so far, Gollum. Very. Important he gets through these next couple of balls. Maybe his last over before a spell. Surprised he hasn't tried another full toss. It was successful the first time. And that's a good length, good line. Just goes over the top of off stump. Yeah, very good delivery, that one. Loop lucky there that he's not walking his way back to the pavilion. He has Ali and Slip giving George some advice, some batting tips. Never shy to have a word, Neo's Ali. Gullum in for the final delivery of the seventh. It is full. It's lofted over the infield. There's runs to be had here. Will it go all the way to the ropes? No. Cut off right down there on the boundary. Get back for two. And that's the end of the seventh. The Nomads now 24 for one. Yeah, Vissal Sharma did a good job to get back there and cut that one off. Rossley 12 not out. Loop 9 not out. Rebuilding after the early wicket. Malvin Carr coming in next. Extremely dangerous. But that deep, the Nomads. We will see a change in bowling from the pavilion end. That Shahi Samir. Bodders with ball in hand. Yeah, it certainly is. He'll come off his long run. A young man from originally from Nepal. He's very quick at his best been told to take the sleeves off. Well, he's chosen to take the sleeves off, one or the other. He'll be bowling to Rossley. wonder if he's 
tuned in and had a listen to the podcast this week, Bodders, because we've got a big Nepal guest on. Of course, the A for 52 podcast, Rohit Powdell. Great interview. Captain of Nepal on his way to the World Cup. He gave up some of his time for us after the final against Papua New Guinea. We sat down and had a little chat with him out at Tinkwong Road Recreation Ground. Shahi Samir now. Ross Leon straight shuffles two steps forward. Gets to the fall of the ball but hits it straight to mid-wicket. Premier League down here tomorrow, Bushy. Yep. Festival of Cricket, fan zone open again at Kowloon Cricket Club. Do you know, are they using the same pitch tomorrow or a different pitch? Presume the one under the mats, maybe? I had a look at all the pitches this morning, and this is the only one that looked like it could be played on. What about the one just to the right of the Astro? It's very green, as you can see. It's the same colour as the grass. I think we'll be on this pitch, but I can confirm in his break. I'll run over and find Amanat, the head groundskeeper here at KCC. Samir just straying down leg side to the left-hander. Wide. Pigeons yet, Bushy? No pigeons. A bit early. Maybe. It's an afternoon start. I thought we'd see more of them in for the grand final. Well, exactly. Samir, this time, just <laughs> stood up on it that time, Rossley. Let it dribble behind square leg. Yeah, they've got some Ad Khan back on the boundary. Rossley, it's just in front of square, so there's always one in there. Farouk inside the circle at mid wicket. Farouk Saeed. Easy ones. Now to be looped the right hander. Like we've had this over going for quite some time, but we're only two legal deliveries in. This one crunched on the offside. That's four off the bat. Oh, that's a beautiful shot. That's ominous. Smear, he can't be there. That's too short. Luke takes full advantage. Just cuts him, smashes him through the offside. He gets himself up into double figures now, getting himself underway. Watch on the replay. Just gave himself some room there. Loop and crunched it. And they've now ball chased and pushed cover back onto the ropes and that one's just behind point as a fielder huge shouts of weight on from loop when it's at or near a fielder Trevetti fielding there inside the circle just behind point run rate creeping up towards the four mark so build that platform you're talking about bodice yeah they're doing it well at the moment these two they really are after being sent in and the loss of the early wicket, second ball. Big wide stance from George Loop. Full. Runs through the gully region. Work to do down at deep third. Just a single. Wait for the signal from the umpire. So he's off the bat. So you can post a score of 175 and above five and over in a grand final with oh. the Tartars yeah, form that, that they've been in. How brittle the batting lineup has been for the Tartars in recent form. The computer at the moment it's going big. Projected 217 in yeah. 35 overs. There's wickets in hand I suppose. Watches that one go past outside off. Well I mean north of 200 is definitely on that's what they want. And if they keep wickets in hand that's probably what they'll end up with. Eight overs done. The Nomads 31 for one. But as we're talking about that podcast that we've done this week with the Nepal captain, Rahul Powdell, that is now officially the highest rated episode after one day. No, it's brilliant. It's brilliant. overtaken the first episode. Episode 25 has now got a higher listenership after one day than the first one we did with Captain Nazaka. That was Nazaka's interview, wasn't it? Yeah. The original one, that was the number one. The first episode of the podcast. Now we're up to 25 we've done. It's a 
lot. But they gave me hours of rest. Coulomb's going to continue. That's that loud call again. Wait, no. Huge call from Luke. Rossley under no confusion what George wants to do. Coulomb's got to keep it tight. He's been wonderful so far. Just one for ten. 4.1 This one's pushed hard on the leg side work to do cut off nicely keeps it down just to that single and He just got the one but it was a lovely shot just timed beautifully off his legs along the ground near very nearly found the gap and run, would have run away for four long boundary down there hitting straight when bowling from the bowling club end Rossley just plays out in the air, straight through the gap. That's the gap we were talking about before the loop was aiming for. And Rossley found it and it runs away for four. A little bit aerial early. Looked a little bit dangerous off the bat, but he placed it perfectly. Shuffled down again. A little bit of bottom hand, but found the gap as Bod has said important breaks down the boundary Rossley continues to hurt the Tartars after that drop catch and this time he just wrist flicked it yeah he doesn't need to play those sort of shots there's no big future in that there it is thank you that's exactly what I thought he's doing beautifully when he's hitting the ball yeah he didn't need to flick at it no not at all no future in that at all there's a third man back there. All you're going to do is, best you're going to get is one. You're going to miss it or nick off. So, the previous ball, he played through the line beautifully into the offside. He just wants to stick with that, not bring it undone with a bad shot. Wraps him on the pad, pitched outside leg. Umpire Shaw Dasha, zero interest. Yeah, he wasn't really an appeal from Gulub. He knew that was a not out, but it is a dot. Coming up to the end of his fifth, just one ball remaining. Run rate up over four now. Gulam to finish his fifth over. Smart Cardinal field there, it's pushed into the offside. That's the end of the over, nine gone. Score is 36 for the loss of one wicket. Which means the run rate is now exactly four. Exactly four. Let's see the partnerships. Yeah, the first one didn't last long. This one shouldn't have lasted long either. That's quite right. Rossley dropped on six in Gullum's third in the third over. Gullum's second. But he's out there. How costly it's going to be, we will find out. But uh, at this point, these two are starting to look quite solid. Anything too full, they're getting on quickly. Anything too short, they're getting on quickly. So now bowling back to Samir at the clubhouse end. Of course, the very short boundary straight. So Samir cannot be too full. Vishal Sharma at mid on and Taran Lungardi at mid off, both inside the circle. And there's not a lot of space between them and the boundary. So Shahi Samir's got to make sure that he's back of the length. Take that out of play. A lot of field changes going on here. They've removed fine leg. He was down on the ropes, gone into a gully position. Is, is there only two on the leg side now? Am I missing someone or is it 7-2? I, can't, I, I can't see a third. I think you're right, Bushy. I think it's 7-2. And Yep, it is. So plenty of paddock on the leg side. Between third man on the boundary and mid-wicket inside the circle, there is not another fielder. So... Shahi Samir cannot be leg stump, he cannot be short. Luke will be eyeing on that off, anything that's short or even on middle and short. Captain Faith in Samir to bowl his lines. Didn't have the 
Deep extra cover on the ropes. He's not going to be able to cut that one off anyway. Smashed into the rope for four. No one is cutting that off. I mean, I reckon Samad Khan probably had about four to five metres max to go to his right to cut that off. He took two steps, and by the time he'd taken the two steps, it was already across the rope. That was absolutely creamed through the offside. So I'm saying you can't be too full, you can't be too short. Too short from Samir there. Yeah, just absolutely smoked it. It was just standard deliver, really, wasn't it? Yep. Well, Shay, he got this time full. Hit, guided out to point almost, but cut off. Mahan Trivedi. He's going harder at the ball now, Luke. You can feel he's figured out the pace of the wicket. Feeling more comfortable out there. He was one off about 11 or 12. And see now he's nearly up to 20 off just 27. Now the top scorer and that one smoked onto the leg side nobody out there too short gave himself some room. Bushy that was what I was saying where Samir can't be there's two fielders on the leg side short just sat up a loop went bang simple as you like over the top of Farouk Saeed at mid wicket inside the circle four runs another four valuable runs Samir's got two to come in this, the 10th over. Loop into the 20s now. Two boundaries this over. Going from 15 to 23 very quickly. What's he got this time? Cut through oh. point, that's four. There's a hat-trick of fours in this over. That's a beautiful shot as well. Just played it in front of Ahan Trevetti there. It was four from the moment it left the bat. And from a slow start, he's now nearly run a ball. He had a side of this over where he guided it straight to the backward point fielder. This time decided to go straight through point, race it down towards the Nomads dugout. And they were very appreciative of the shot, and rightly so. I have a feeling Samir might get a breather after this one. Well, got one ball left in the 10th. Loop on 27. So just watches this one go outside off for a dot. No need, 12 runs off the over already. And after 10, the Nomads are 48 for one. Yeah, all of a sudden it's nearly up to five runs and over. Partnership at 48. Total score at 48. Looking a bit ominous here at the moment. Got to bowl their lines and lengths better, the Tartars. See if Gulam's going to continue. Captain Vishal coming across and having a chat to him. It seems he will. He's bowled five overs, one for 15. He's been the pick. really has been intelligent batting from these two after losing a wicket the second ball. Field is back on the offside. It's long ball Sarah's gone to the boundary at like a like an extra cover on the boundary. Smart Khan inside the circle to cover. And it's full and he slashes outside the off stump at it. Will Walsh takes it. Targeting a score of they're thinking well over 200 at this point in time. Nomads, Tartars need a wicket. You're not going to get one there. Gulam does well of his own bowling. Very well fielded. Took a good court and bowled early, but put Rossley down when he was on six. Fair bit of chat in the field out there from the Tartars trying to lift, trying to construct a wicket. Rossley takes an easy one into the offside. Samad Khan to his right, dives, misses. Balsara comes off the fence, does the fielding. Rossley gets the safety of the non-strikers in. And George Loop now seems to be getting into a bit of a mood, taking full advantage of anything short or full. No one back on the leg side for Loop. 
Weeks and from fine leg. And flicks that with confidence into the leg side, but straight at square leg. No run there. Again, two to come in this over. And it's full. No run there. Big weight on call from Luke. Huge caller. At least we know when he's going to run. Oh, absolutely. It's a very big yes, but a lot of weights and no's. And with no illusions. Wanting to get through. He's just pulled up there. It looks a bit worrying. Coming up, he's got one ball to bowl on his sixth over and he's looking very proppy. I saw him in the field. He was down at deep third and he ran around and he looked proppy I in that I, know, as I well. noticed that as well and I didn't mention it at the time because I wasn't sure whether he'd done something, but you can tell he has. Try to get through this ball anyway. Yeah, he's looking very proper. He full tosses it, and it's going to go for four, is it? No, Vishal gets a hand on it. He does well. He's going to save two runs. They're going to come back for two. That was a great piece of fielding there, Vishal Sharma. Brought up the 50 for the Nomads. They're now 51 for one after 11, going along at 4.64. Bodders got a bit of an update. Um, Gullam was injured in the last game, um, so he came in. Not 100%. So, so they've left out the bloke who's got four far. Who's injured. Oh, okay. That's, well that, that was my second uh, okay. nugget of information for you today. Well, that, that makes sense then. Yes. Because otherwise it makes no sense. Well, now it does. Have a look at your Hong Kong there, Bottas. Yeah, you can see the one big over in the Hong Kong there. Up around a dozen. They're looking good now. 51 for one, the Nomads. Exclusively tipped to win the grand final by Bottas on the 8 for 52 podcast. Well... If I was privy to all this injury <laughs> information prior... Well, well, I certainly wasn't. ...on the <coughs> podcast, if I'd known, maybe oh. about the decision might have headed oh. Nomad's way. But well, I became aware of it about three minutes ago. As I suggested, Shahi Samir's been given a break after those three boundaries, and they're going to go to Samad Khan from the clubhouse end. Yet to see any slow bowling. Yeah, I, I, I think Gullum's bowled six. I don't think he'll be bowling seven, the way he's looking... There down at fine leg, so wouldn't surprise me if they go straight to Vish Vishal Sharma from this end, from the bowling club end, the next over after this Samad Khan over. On to try something slower, perhaps. We haven't seen a lot of ball movement. 50 partnership up, of course, as well. Wow. With the first wicket falling on zero. <laughs> yes. That's a, some moot stat, Sultan of Stats. Goes without saying. Rossley on 18. Oh, yeah, he was. The, the lead setter there for a while for yeah, the Nomads, and now George has taken the reins. Well, Luke really took advantage of that Samir over, didn't he, with those three boundaries, so he's rocketed past Rossley now. Around the wicket, takes a couple of steps down, has no idea where that went. Yeah, it's well described. He had literally had no idea where that had gone. He was looking offside and then figured out it was on the leg side. I think it bounced up and hit him in the buttock, so that's when he figured out where it had gone. Well, survives. Good start from Samad. Plenty of padding around that buttock area. Won't have done any damage. Big thigh pad on. Big left-hander. Third highest run scorer in Saturday Division 1 this season. Actually been bowled to by the leading run scorer. Oh, and the big inside edge, I, I think, think it was. Pushy. Yep. Nothing that Will Walsh could do. That one as it flew away to his right. We'll see a replay as it went to the boundary. But yes, huge inside edge. Uncontrolled. Yeah, one hand off the bat, big inside edge. Walsh really had no chance there. Went too far to his right. Goes away for a fortuitous boundary. And it will count. 
goes to 22. Short this time. Hit hard out to deep cover, but it will only be a single. Sweeper out there. Remembering Tata's winning the toss, electing to bowl first. Picked up a wicket the second ball with a very lucky full toss caught and bowled. Since then, Nomads regrouped, settled, established a platform, and have now built a 56-run partnership to put their noses in front as they try to defend their title. Don't want to keep harping on about it, but I think we'd be in a different stage of the game had Rosley been caught in that on six, what over was that? It was on over, six in, over the, five in the third, third over. over. Yeah. Oh, that's big, a big slash. He didn't do much on the ball. He just slashed at it and missed. Well, that's his standard deliver. Well, he's picked up a few boundaries already through the offside. That one, Samad Khan, he's quick. And it's just got through and it's just gone over the top of his bat. He did go hard at it, so the top edge is probably back. safe. Gullum's down there on one leg down at third man. Final delivery of the 12. It's full. Gets down on it nicely. Just guides it behind point. Another dot. Five runs off that over as well. 12 overs done. The Nomads 56 for one. George Luke calling for new gloves at the end of the over. Umpire Shroy Vasher says, no problem. 12 overs gone. Just came in to face the third ball. He's not happy with those ones that have been taken out. He knows he wants some specific gloves. The whole bag's coming out now. Loops made his way outside the circle. Here they come. Gloves are out now. He's happy with this pair that are coming out. Bit of blue, bit of red, predominantly white. Quick drink. Shroy Vash is ready to go. Loops running back out to the centre. Sporting his orange boots. A little bit of chats in front of the live mic. Tom Ingram coming in with the family to watch the game. Oh. Gullum is going to bowl his seventh. Well, I'm enormously surprised by that, Bushy. Oh. Very nice first delivery, though. Yeah. Even though he is a bit proppy. Very much. Do I need to take evasive action with Tom Ingram coming in? Has he listened to the podcast yet? Again. On one leg. Yeah, good single into the offside. It's Rossley down. He goes to 23, 24, sorry. Ingram family have arrived to support their nomads. Put the fence up. It's not allowed in broadcast. No. You can listen to the podcast. I may have been a little disparaging. Quite likely our special guest next week. Maybe. Another stand of the liver. That's Chuck. a great bit of fielding. Uh, I thought he'd mistimed it there for a minute. It looked like he went early I and hung in the air. I thought it was going to bounce over yeah. his arm and go for four, but he's managed to time it beautifully and just palm it. Not even his palm, the side of his arm. Yeah, it looked like, it looked like he mistimed his dive, but he hadn't. Gullum figures three balls to come in his spell. He's been one for 19 so far. He's been wonderful besides that drop chance. Loop goes hard down the ground, four runs, yeah, over the top of Vishal Sharma. He was never going to get that. Right over the top of his head. Went like a bullet, four runs. Loop looking the goods. He's in his arc. Full up. Watching the replay. He's done a lot of good work, Gollum, here. He doesn't want to bring it undone. The last three balls of his spell. after he finishes this perhaps they'll bring the 12th on which is Vikash Paswani today who's the 13th the 13th is the injured Darshan Chak okay. 
Here he comes, go on. There's runs here as they push Samir back. But just the single. One ball left in the 13th, one ball left in Fulham's seven over spell. Beautiful Kowloon Cricket Club. See him looking down the ground towards the bowling club behind the side screen. And there's a beautiful historic building sitting behind. Wonderful place to watch and play cricket. Page Hotel on pa the left. Page 148 there on the left, yeah. Gulam, one ball to come. Not so heritage, but it's there. Shuffles a little bit forward and then decides, I'm going to leave that alone. We're going to see off Gulam. He's bowled seven overs, one for 24. And after 13, the Nomad 62 for one. Well, I've got to say, if he's carried an injury coming into this, he's done a fantastic job and should be super proud of his efforts. Uh, he looks well proppy. I think he might be heading off as suggested. I'm not sure. Vikash is still down there with his vest on. He's going to continue, but you can see him. He's top of screen. Like Darshan Shah is going to come on. Must be fit enough to field. He's got to be fitter than Gulam at the moment. Always needs a stretcher. Well, he's done his seven overs and he should be super proud. He's done a great job for the Tartars. Yes. Collected the bowl after winning the toss, the Tartars. He's the only man to get a wicket so far. Saz Khan just coming around to have a watch of the Tartars game as well. Yeah, there's good support from both teams down here today. Family, friends, players from other teams. Umpires just getting together, having a little bit of a conference in the middle. I'm not sure about what. Done 13 overs in 53 minutes. So a big drinks break after 17, Bushy. Yep. Or more to get through to the drinks break. I don't think the overrates. They can get through to the drinks break without losing another wicket, the Nomads. They're going to be extremely confident. On the flip side, yeah. the Tartars can take a couple. They'll feel they've got their noses in front. Smart Khan. Loop on strike. Oh. Straightens him up. Yeah, big inside edge on Crossley in the previous over and just beat Loop all ends up there. You see Loop's batting a little bit further back in his crease than he was earlier. I don't know if it's the extra pace of Samad Khan. He's just trying to give himself that little bit of extra time. I'll say shuffled across towards outside leg for that one. And straightened him up. And the ball followed him. Good first delivery. Good first over also from Samad Khan. Five runs from it. One of those, that freaky four. That one's got bat on ball, but he's hit it straight to Taran Mungani out here near our commentary position. He's really middling them, Loop, isn't he? He's really timing them beautifully. Field's placement. Lugani was in the right spot. Vishal Sharma feverishly rubbing the ball. Hands it back to young Samad. We'll go around the wicket to the left-handed Rossley. He beats him all up as well. Will Walsh was extremely confident behind the stump. Samad was sort of interested. Will, 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 Will we have a look at the replay, Botters. Yeah, Walsh was very confident behind. Certainly squared him up. Yeah, the replay just went off before we saw the actual ball. Suboptimal. Yeah. Anyway, Smart comes in again. Bowling well. This one wrapped on the thigh pad. I'll get through to the leg by. Really getting it through with good pace, Bushy. Smart is at the moment. Tidy over. Two balls remaining in it. One off the bat, one off the thigh pad. But it does bring the big hitting George Loop back on strike. He doesn't get any big bat on that one. Tucks it away safely as it 
flies past outside off. Good couple of overs here from Samad leading up to Drinks. Like you say, they do need to get a breakthrough though, going in to the Drinks break at 17. Yeah. Yeah, that's what the Tartars need. They need, uh, they need something to give them a bit of confidence, break this partnership, which is now at 64. Beaten the bat a couple of times, found the inside edge of Rossley earlier. Smart needs to find a wicket for the Tartars. No one's left alone. Loop Smart. Yeah, was outside off, wasn't moving away too much, so dot to end. You can see the Tartars bowling there. Got him bowled out, one for 24. It was a good bowling spell from him, especially if he was as injured as he looked at yeah. the end. No, he should be super proud of his efforts. It means somebody is going to bowl from the bowling club end. It'd be Vishal Sharma. You'd expect. And it is. Yeah. The captain bringing himself on. He's going to need to try to get a breakthrough, as we say. Three more overs until the drinks break. Yeah, it's important three overs this for both teams. Nomads defending champions, of course. Tartars finished first on the table, earned the home final. Won the toss, elected the bowl. Unbelievably in my mind. Coming up on an hour's play, Bushy as well. Two minutes to two. So we've got to be done by 3.15. Nine boundaries, and slowed down the overrate a little bit. No maximums yet, no need. That wicket's in hand, I'm sure we'll see some towards the end of the batting innings. Rossley now to face the spinner, Vishal Sharma. He's coming around the wicket for the left-hander. Floats a big full toss and that gets crunched. Diving effort, can't cut it off, got what it deserved. A absolute stinker of a delivery first up from Sharma. Just put it on a platter for Rossley. The only thing that was good for Sharma there was it didn't go over the rope on the full for six. It was really there. It was a six ball. And he didn't really ball. try to belt it. He just caressed it down the ground. Yeah, a real stinker of a first ball. We saw Gullum do that and he got a wicket with his second full toss. Maybe that's the plan. We'll see. Resetting. It's a full toss to second up, and he almost poked it out there to a short mid-wicket, but safe dot if ball. If that's Tata's plan A, Bushy, I think they need a plan <laughs> B. <laughs> well, it worked once. Never know you're like in the big city. Yet to get one on the pitch yet. Sharma, this time is. Give himself some room. Eases it out to deep point. Mahant Trevetti keep it to the single. Yeah, real three looseners there, two fullies and a half tracker. Saturday Championship Div 1 final nerves, perhaps. Yeah, they're going to feast on this, these two. He needs to get his length right. Now with the right-hander on, field moves. Loop with his orange boots. Up to 35 now. Field going everywhere. Long on back, deep mid-wicket back, deep backward square on the ropes. It's a very short boundary. That's a better delivery. Good one. Almost gets through the the gate. Yeah, a little unlucky there, Sharma. That was quicker and fuller and really went straight through loop. I don't think he was expecting that. Much better from Sharma. Floats this one and it's lofted. There's no one down there, so it's going to go racing down into the side screen, the scoreboard area, I should say, for four. Yeah, Vishal just floated that one up and Loop said, I'm going to take that and I'm going to take all of it. Belted it over the offside. Four runs. He's in some form today. Little dance down the wicket. Just crunched it. Well, to an extra wicket yeah, now it's uh, the ball's under a tractor he knew exactly where he wanted to hit it as well he was aiming for the tractor and yeah. found it hit it under it and we can't get the ball back at the moment so a bit delayed it must be right underneath the tractor we've got 
one of the players crawling under the tractor now. Third ball going out, the one by Sheroy Vasha, new ball. Oh, got it back. Wasn't under the tractor, had moved away. There's the Hong Kong there. Did one big over of 12. Another one on nine, which is this one. I think the Hong Kong is going to start to explode after we come out of the drinks break. It's no more wickets yeah, fall. If they go in one for him, you've got Sahal Malvin Car down to come in next. Desperate for wickets here, Tata. Tartus. Full. Hit straight back through the bowler. Chance! Oh, that was out if it hit. Direct hit was gone for sure. Taran Longani, very, very good backing up. There was every chance that was going to go for five. But there is no doubt that loop would have been run out by some margin with a direct hit there from Devang Bolsara. He was asking the question, was it going to be out if it hit? And I can answer it, Devang. It would have been. It just flew over the top of the stumps. It wasn't far away. You can see it here. It comes off Sharma's leg. It goes straight to him. Expensive over there, 10 off it. Good one for the Nomads. Saying how important it is, these three overs before drinks. And advantage Nomads after the first of the three. Now Samad Khan, he's gonna bowl his third. He's been good. He's been unlucky. Down the inside edge of Rossley. And went away to the boundary. He's only given up two other runs. He's been very, very good. Right. Beaten the bat on a number of occasions. Yeah, he has been good, but the run rate is creeping, creeping towards five now. Two overs until the drinks break. You win the toss against the defending champions and send them in. I mean, this is not where you want to be after 15 overs. Short diving effort from Devang Bolsara can't get it, but Mungani will pick it up. Just the single. It was always going to be only one, whether Bolsara got it or not. Rossley now. He's faced 43 balls on 29. He's watched a lot of action from George Loop. Let's see if he wants to get in on the party himself. Quite a dirty George Loop now after that diving. Yeah, all in, in all the red dirt at the crease. Around the wicket. Watches that one go through to the keeper, Walsh. Samad's been impressive. He'd love to pick up an edge or rock it into that off stump, coming around the wicket to the left-hander. I wonder if this one is going to be closer to the top of off, but that also if it's read by Rosley. Get onto it early. Get it through point. I don't think that extra cover fielder will be able to cut it off. Samad, he strays it down leg after all that. And yeah, just pushed it across the face of the left-hander. Easy decision for the umpire. Umpire McDonald, father of commentator Brenton. Brenton. Wonder if Brenton's doing the under 17s up at under 17s grand final on today up at Hong Kong Cricket Club. Could well be. We'll have to have a look. This time it stands up on it and just eases it to mid off. It's a single, rotates the strike back to loop. Done a good job, these two, Bushy. For the Nomads. Couldn't ask for anything more, really, could you? No, it was all pear shaped for them after two balls with Luke Voice, that unfortunate dismissal, or unexpected dismissal. That one's pulled away. It'll only be a single as well. Tidy bowling from Samad Khan. Yeah, he's been good. Great knock here from Rossley so far. Saw his opening partner dismissed and dug in. No one cut, there's oh. the runs on the wow. offside that I was talking about. Brute force, beautiful stroke. Oh, wonderful cricket shot, that one. It wasn't that short. It wasn't too short at all. 
but he's picked it up so early and just put it behind point. That's exactly what I was saying if he was going to oh. try to aim for the top of oh, it's a no ball free hit as well. Well. Oh, double the punishment for Samad Khan. No ball free hit boundary. Rossley can open his shoulders here. Short boundaries down the ground. Samad will be short here. No doubt about it. As he steams in. What does the free hit do? Wraps on the pads. Nothing. Dot ball. Good it ball. It wasn't short at all. He went full at him. Got away with it, Samad there. Gave up the no ball. Gave up the free hit. Rossley can't take advantage of it. Two to come in the 16th. Nice shot. They're just going to take one. Sweeper on the boundary collects it. Final delivery it was, in fact. 16 done. The Nomad's 84 for one. So nine off that over. Ten off the previous. We said how important these last three overs before drinks were. Those two overs have definitely gone to the Nomads. Tardis now really desperate for a wicket before drinks. Look at that wasp projector. Looks ugly if from a Tata Tata perspective. 265. But look at this platform that they're laying for exactly. the Nomads, the defending champions after being sent into bat. Nine, 19 overs left after this one. One over before the drinks break. Looking forward to my cup of tea. Get us through to the end. Looks like we're going the full 35 for this batting innings, Ooh. unless something else happens. I'd say without a doubt. Is this Mitch Shah coming on? It is Mitch Sharp going to bowl the final over before drinks. And it's Rosley on strike on 35. That one was a bit of a loosener. Work to do in the outfield. Cannot cut it off. Runs into the new entertainment drinks tent for tomorrow's Premier League for four. Well, if you thought Vishal Sharma's first one was a loosener, Mitch Sharma's backed it up 100%. That was a half tracker. Rossley just had to wait for it. Seemed like he had to wait forever for it to get there. And when it did, he just put it behind square leg for four. Yep. Angled it down leg. And it continued. Just waited and waited. Eventually the ball got there. Yeah, it was slow, wasn't it? Yeah. Field change. Taron Longani was down there. He's come up inside the circle now. Shahi Samir has gone down. Deep square leg. He's gone to tend the, b tend the bar for tomorrow's Premier League. Where that tent is. Come on down tomorrow. Premier League action. Oh. And that one's been put into the the seating area, the fan zone. I mean, really, that's that's just too short. Same thing as the first one. Got exactly what it deserved. It was actually easier for Rossley, the second one, than the first one. Just played it fine of the man at Deep Square, who's now gone finer. Ball chasing. Ball chasing. Don't set fields for bad balls. That's what they're doing. Nice. Real pressure here on Tartars. That one's full up. Better delivery gets the dot. Well, they went for 10 off the 15th over, 9 off the 16th, and 8 given up in the first two balls of the 17th. Yeah, when we said there was three overs remaining, I thought if the Tartars could go in at 75 for one, that'd be okay. It's not great, but it's not ideal. They might go in three figures here, Nomads. Yeah. Oh, that's a good delivery. Took a couple, but that's a good one. That's better. That's better from Shah. That's why a slip is in place. Balls like that. He throws that one up. It's nice and full. Just squirts into the offside. Smart can't point fields. Looks better from Mitchell. One ball to go until the drinks break. They've gone for 10, 9, 
eight so far for the last three overs before drinks. At 27. Final delivery. This one given some room. It's been crunched. Work to do for Ahan Trevetti. He gets there though. It will be nine off the over as we go into the drinks break. 17 overs done. The Nomads will have a drink at 93 for one. Ad advantage defending champions Nomads after being sent into bat, losing a wicket the second ball. Rossley and Loop had took their time, re-established, and now have the Nomads right on top here at Cowland Cricket Club. Let's have a quick break, Bushy. We'll be back in a couple of minutes to watch the last 18 overs of this Nomads innings.
Welcome back to Kowloon Cricket Club for this Cricket Hong Kong Saturday Championship Division 1 final between the Tartars and Hong Kong Cricket Club Nomads. Aaron Bush with you, Matt Botfield. We've just finished the drinks break and it is advantage the defending champions, Hong Kong Cricket Club Nomads. Yeah, definitely, definitely advantage to them at this stage after being sent into bat 93 for one. But we've got a big moment in the game here, Bushy, because they're going to go after the drinks break straight back to Niaz Ali. Can he do, can he weave some magic He's bowled three overs, none for 14. Didn't actually look that dangerous in his first spell, to be honest, which is unlike Niaz. He'll be all fired up, I can tell you that. George Loop's not worried about Niaz's pace. He's gone back out there with the floppy on. Yeah, he's got the HKCC floppy on. He's very relaxed out there. I think he's had a change of shirt, too. On 42, he has. Definitely the strides haven't changed, but the shirt has. Got the dust off. He's on 42. Rossley's on 44. It will be Niaz Ali from the... Pavilion N3 over so far, none for 14. I'll tell you what, they, up to that drinks break, there wasn't a lot of enthusiasm in the field, Tartars. They were down. Can Niaz lift them? Getting one. And one can always bring two, as we know. He comes in now, charging into Rossley. Over with the, the wicket to the left hander. And he just watches that one. That swung. Yeah, it's wide. This is the thing. He'd much prefer to bowl to the right handers and moving it back into them. With that sort of swing, straight after drinks, you could put a slip in there, go on the attack just for just for an over or two from Niaz's end. He's coming in from the clubhouse end. He started that on middle and off. It's pitched outside off and been taken behind the Astro turf by Will Walsh. Niaz comes in again. This time bat on ball. Runs down to long on. Single. He's not going to worry, Ali, I don't think. Take the one down the ground. He gets the bowl to the right hand now. Loop. I'll tell you what, Niaz will notice he's wearing a floppy as well. You think this one might be short? Uh, it shouldn't be. He should <laughs> throw it up there and try to get the movement back in that he's looking for. Pick up that LB and bowls as we've seen as we've seen him do so many times over the years. But he just might be a little bit turned on by that floppy. Field changes, fine leg coming up. Farouk Saeed, he's inside the circle now. Deep square leg on the boundary. Mid on inside the circle. Long off on the boundary. Taran Longani sweeping a cover. Twelfth man dashing down there at, five, at third. Still over the wicket. Lofted. There's nobody there at mid off. His long off is down on the ropes and it crashes into the side screen for four. Yeah, Ali throws that one up trying to get that swing and Loop says, oh, we'll have some of that. Niaz teapot out there at the moment. Loop just took him straight down the ground. I think it was Han Trevetti down there at long off. Couldn't get round to it in time and it just crashed into the side screen for four. That's Niaz got this time. Shorter. That's expected, but it's going to go to the boundary for four as well. It is, and he and brings, brings up his 50 in style. And That's the 100. Absolute style. 100 partnership is up, 103. George Loop goes to 50 off 49. Every one of the nomads on their feet in their dugout. Oh, it's a big moment bringing the Azali back into the attack, and Loop goes bang, bang, 4-4. Four, four. It's a finals knock between these two out in the middle for the Nomads at the moment. Fine finals knock. Fuller this time. That one didn't come back at all. Just drifted away outside off. Umpire says wide. Well, Niaz. Niaz Ali not very happy about it either. They got that first one to Rosalie to really swing away. And that one there, I think he was trying to get it to swing back in and just, yeah, just kept, kept on going. Kept going and going. And he has Ali under pressure. I'll get a single onto the leg side. Rotate the strike. It's been an expensive over for the Tartars so far. And we're still two balls remaining. It's about 12 off it yeah, so far. Yeah, it is 12 with two to come. Not what they wanted. If I got my memory right, it was 10. The last four overs have been 10, 9, 9, and now 12. Pull the Manhattan, Hong Kong up at the end of this over. Have a look at the runs flowing for the Nomads. 
with that straight. It's bobbled onto his hip, but gets a valuable dot. Yeah, got his body in behind it, luckily for him. Or spinning away from him. 12 off it so far, pushing, as you said, as importantly as that worst single here. And his figure's 26 off 3.5. Slower ball. Eases it, will retain the strike. Rosley moves to 46. The Nomads move to 106 for one after 18. We'll have a look at that Manhattan now. No, we won't. No, we won't. We'll look at the Hong Kong. Yes, yes, but I'm instructing the directors to put up. They don't know that it's called the Hong you Kong. You can see the last four overs there. 10, 10, 9, 13. Putting their dominance on this match now. The Nomads, the defending champions. And that's the best over for the Nomads. 13 off it. We mentioned at the start of the over how important it was. Tartars. Nomads are just continuing on their merry way here. And we're going to continue with Mitch Shah. Very poor couple of deliveries to start his first over. There's no sunshine, but the worm is stretching its neck towards whatever little sun there is. Really is on the up and up at the moment. Boundary here will bring up Rossley's 50 as well. 16 fours so far in this partnership. No maximums yet. Long, long, and long off on the boundary. Can Shark get it right? Yeah. He's taken it. He has. He's taken it. Rossley's just punched it straight back to him, Bushy. That's almost what he did at the beginning when he was dropped on six and he's now got to go on 46. Caught and bowled. Mitch Shah gets the huge breaks through. Oh, Tartars were desperate for that, and it came under funny circumstances, actually. He just threw that up there, and Rossley was trying to push down the ground for one. It was just elevated, and Shah's gone across a pitch and taken a lovely, lovely catch. The Tartars were desperate for that. As I said, came under funny circumstances, but they have found a way to get their second wicket. That's 106. But the news doesn't get great for them, because in is walking Sahal Malvin Carr. You'll have to get me some stats on Salha's uh, season so far, Bodders. I'm going to watch a replay again of that catch because it was a brilliant catch. 99% of the time might have been spilled. Yeah, Melvin Carr, the only reason why he's not up in those top three scorers for the season is he hasn't played as many games as some of the others. Good fight back from Mitch Shah. First over wasn't a great one. But he takes a wicket with the first ball of his second over. So how Marvin Carr. He scored 264 runs this year, averaging 52.8. Played less games than those at the top. It's a handy average, and he's on strike. He's going to start. No, he's not going to take the single. Good. Saeed. Good See the, the number of the, honk, uh, the KCC... Premier League, that's in the air, but it's been hit hard. That's four, that's the way to get off the mark. Malvin Carr in style. Goodness me, that's a beautiful shot to get yourself off the mark, isn't it? Short from Sharp. Watch the replay, he's found the gap. Through mid-wicket, between mid-wicket and long on. Back live, this time pushes it through the offside. Slowly dribbles out, gets through for a single. Yeah, for those who've played six games or more in this competition this season, Salha Malvin Carr is averaging 52.8, which is second highest, only behind Toby Brown, who's yet to come in. He's averaged 65. So, talking about batting lineup strength, they've got it in spades, the Nomads. Loop this time, smashes it our way. Diving effort, one bounce into the boarding for four. 
Oh, it's a good effort from Trevetti on the boundary there. Go, go, go. Probably in two minds whether to go for it or not, and he did. He did have a go for it, and it's just fallen in front of him and rocketed into the KCC hoardings in front of us here in the commentary position. Gave it some air, did loop, chanced his arm, fell just short. Trevetti was to our left, it hit basically into our commentary position. It loops mid wicket. Shown the fall of wicket isn't going to slow these two down. They're going to keep the foot on the pedal. One ball remaining. Nine off it already. That includes a dot and a wicket. Over the wicket. Full in the air again. One bounce gets through the field. Another boundary. Three boundaries. That over. And a wicket all going on. 19 overs done. The Nomads are 119 for two. Well, it started beautifully with the wicket for Tartas and Mitch Shah there. And it all fell apart as it went through. Ended up three boundaries in the over. Another over where it's more than double, well, in the double figures. Yeah, back to back 13. Nomads, yeah. Yeah, it was the, well, they've matched it, haven't they? 13 was the largest of the innings so far, and they've just gone back to back. Well, you can see on your Hong Kong. Well, there it is on the Hong Kong there, yeah. 13 and 13. Off the back of 10, 10, and 9 the previous. So the run rate now is really starting to rocket up. Yeah, they've lost two, but it's only two. 16 overs to go. They've really got a license now, these two, to really try to take the game away from the Tartars and set a very imposing total. Niaz Ali. He's going to bowl again from the clubhouse end. He's going to shorten his run up a little bit. You know, he's going back to his normal spot. So do that time seam, bowl off the short run up. He'll be bowling to Melvin Carr. all class with the bat. So he's averaging 52. If it has a strike rate there, you can find us. See how quickly he's scoring these runs. He's got a license and a platform now to go fast and big, but watchful to start with. Good piece of running there. Oh, I'd given up. I'd actually yeah. look down thinking, obviously that was just a dot ball. Didn't look like one was on at all and they got through and this is where Tartars have got to be right up in the field and cut those off. Build a bit of pressure if they can on the batters. Niaz is going to go around the wicket now to George Loop. 59 off 52. Strike rate over 100 now. As is the run rate. 6.26. Niaz around the wicket. Full. No run this time, so it's his own fielding. Yeah, Melvin Carr's 264 runs at an average of 52 have come at a strike rate of 152.6. Ouch. By far and away the highest strike rate of anyone in the top 20 batters in this competition this year. The, ne the nearest is 105. It's ominous, 100 isn't it? 107. Sorry. Work to do. Lungani in the outfield. Does get round. And Rotates the strike back to Malvin Carr. The point being, Bushy, if he's out there for just 10 overs, he could very well go a long way to taking this game away from the Kowloon, Club, Kowloon Crew Club Tartars. Unless wickets start to fall, that Tartars batting lineup is going to have to everyone fire. Shorter, pulled through square leg, umpire Basha gets out of the way. He didn't get his timing right on that Melvin Carr, it was more of the bottom of the bat, toe of the bat. Loop on strike, now on 60. That one's floated. It was almost a spinner and it t turned away from loop. Yeah, you're right, Bushy. Oh That's exactly what it was. It was a spinner. Beat loop all ends up. Don't really expect that when he's coming in bowling fast at you. And then he decides to put coming the off spinner in. Coming off that shorter run I was talking about earlier. Oh, that's driven hard. Can it be cut off? Yes. No, it has fallen. He was on the rope.
Han Trivedi doesn't know whether it was four or not. He's going to leave it to the umpire. They're going to have a discussion here, the umpires. He did go across the rope. It's just whether he touched the ball whilst he was over the rope. He may not have. We're obstructed here as far as view is concerned. Just going to leave it with the umpires to decide. From that point, vantage point, if they didn't see it, there's no way they can call it four. No, I have called it four. They have? Yeah. There you go. Call, call it a boundary. To the naked eye, it did look like he rolled. It was, it was just whether he touched rope. it. Yeah. Uh, from his body movement, he didn't seem to touch it while he was on the rope, but he could very well have touched in that first fielding motion, could have been in his hands when he touched the rope. He didn't the second time, but certainly in that first time he could have. That's 20 overs gone. 126 for two. They're going at above a runner ball here, Nomads. It's a tidy over from Niaz until the end there, and that boundary, a bit loose. And seven, seven off it in the end. I'm very, not often you see Ali go for 34 off five and not pick up a wicket. He's a leading wicket taker, of course, in this competition. Bit of sun out now. Outrageous. Don't think it'll be here for long, but it poking its head through the clouds as Shah continues. That's in the air, there's a chance, and he's got another wicket. The third wicket falls, and it's a huge wicket of Malvin Carr for seven. Yeah, that wasn't a good ball at all, but it, you know, good bad balls can get wickets. Malvin Carr just didn't get his timing right on that at all. He was trying to go for six, and he's just managed to hit it to mid-wicket inside the circle. Easy catch taken, third wicket down, and it's a huge one. Yeah, he just tried to give himself some room. That's not where he was aiming end picked out the fielder got to go big breakthrough for the Tartars much needed yeah the door slightly ajar for the Tartars now they've got that one can they get another one or two see the partnerships there second ball duck for voice a big 106 and then just 20 between loop and Melvin Carr gets rid of one of the big scorers for the Saturday Championship Div 1 and another one comes in, Toby Brown. Yeah, like I said, of those who've played six or more matches, Toby Brown's got the highest average. 66.5, I think it was. It's the strength of this lineup. Uh, I mean, you know, Tartars are now in a position, they've got to get up and about in the field because if you can get Brown early and get loop, you can make a case Tartars have got their noses back in front at five for five for 130, say, what, five for 140. Three for 126 now. Shah with two wickets now. So watchful to start with from Brown. Yeah, two for 22 off 2.2. Just designed for you there, Bodice. Two for 22 off 2.2. Don't see that very often. Floats this one. Big, thick, leading edge. I think he was trying to put that on the leg side. Gets away with it, Brown. Survives. Before all the action was happening, Bottas, I was going to tell you that the KCC Premier team, half of them are sitting down there on the park bench, watching it long on. Oh, that's in the air as well, but to the right of Taron Lugani. Brown gets off the mark. A bit sketchy with a fall. Yeah, a bit unlucky there for Mitch Shah. He threw his hands out of Brown and... Really could have gone anywhere. Short boundary there, and he finds it. Been a bit unlucky. This time just eases it behind square on the leg side. Gets a single. Yeah, you've got the Premier League team here. You've got a number of the Crusaders as well down here. Of course, the non-selected Tartars are here as well, so it's good support from... Calhoun Cricket Club, See other teams supporting Titus in their grand final. Comes the Jawi, T. Digbal, Wakas Baka, Zaz Khan, all down on the bench near the entertainment area. The ground announcer tent. That's in the air, but it's going to pick the gap beautifully. One bounce for four. Yeah, Loop enjoys that, doesn't he? Over the top of mid wicket. That's the third time I think I've seen him hit a boundary down there. Just throws it up on the leg stump, and look at his run right now. 68 or 57. Right on top here, the Nomads, but Tartars have 
giving themselves a little bit of a chance, taking three. Only need these two out. Loops bag, he's gonna go. Looks like he's going back to the helmet. Samad Khan gonna come back on, no. Vishal Sharma is gonna change ends. No, and uh, they've just realized they're not going to the pace that it's gonna be spin with Vishal Sharma, so the request for helmets has been taken back. They're gonna continue with their caps. The Hong Kong on the screen now, a few big overs there. Just brought it back a little bit, the Tartars, but still giving away too much. Potters, well, this final's going on. So's the Div 2 final, right? Between yeah, Lancers, Lancers, Tigers. Yeah, we thought, you think that uh, the Nomads are going all right. The Tigers batting 210 for 6 in the 29th. Exclusively tipped by Potters on the 8 for 52 podcast. No, it wasn't. I tipped the Tigers as well. Yeah, you did, actually. You got back on the bandwagon. You probably, you probably wrote down, Lance, you, you, like you, you did when you did the, the Craig and Gower on me. No, it's just that you've been getting off and on the Tigers train where I've been on the Tigers train for the last two months. And you've been hopping on, hopping off all the time. Well, I'm back on. It's back in the on. book. Yeah. I can see it. You wrote down the Tigers. Following my tips. I tipped first. Cut you. <laughs> Troublemaker. That's a nice little stroke. The protection, fine leg inside the circle. So, dot. Now Vishal bowling, obviously it's a short boundary straight down the ground. Toby Brown going to take it on. Full. This one will get runs. Garni will pick it up from deep square leg. And who's getting the runs over there in the Div 2 final? A 95 for Vishal Meta. He was in the runs last week as well, I think. He was. I know that name. 58 for Zaman. And the next high scorer is Extras. Coming home with a wet sail, the USRC Tigers. Already promoted, of course. They'll get to play games against these two next season. At the expense of the PACC falling stars. Yeah. And the Punjab Lions. Oh. Full toss. It's almost above waist tight. Doesn't matter. It's gone for four. Yeah, it's a poor piece of bowling there from Vishal Sharma. Very poor. They need another wicket. And the captain just delivers a rank hip high full toss and gets punished. George gets a delivery of a pie. Snacks on it. Bang. Two fielders out there on the ropes. Neither could cut that off. It's that spot again that he loves. Wide is mid on. This time goes on the offside, crunch four. It was too easy, it's just too short. It was too full, four, too short, four. Now, loops on 76. I won't get this exactly right, Bushy, but he was about one off 11, right? Mm. So he's now 75 off 48. We go back, I think what we're thinking at the time after that early week and how we said they had to build a partnership and they did and he was going slow and now he's just cashing in. Oh, short again. Hits it straight to the fielder though. Chance! Oh, I think that would have been our direct hit. Good throw, but missed in the end. George shaking it off. Going, okay. Survived that one again. Second time he's almost been run out. Oh, he's just anything loose. He's just punishing. Sharma was lucky to get away with that one. So this over's gone for 10. One to come. Brown on strike. It's going at a strike rate of 100 slow at the moment. Full toss as well. Oh, he got away with that one. Didn't he ever. 11 off the over. Another good one for the Nomads. They move to 146 for three after 22. Yeah, run right now up above six and a half. Got to go to the calculator to figure this out, Bushy, but if they can get up to seven and overs, 245. Wasp is eight, 278. I can give you all the calculations, Bottas, at six and over. 224 this run rate 232 now if they don't if they don't lose many more wickets they're going to get a lot more than that and that's why it's crucial for the Tartars if they want to stay in this game they need a couple of wickets in the next couple of overs and see the back of these two bowling will need to improve it's sharp two of the three wickets to his name will continue from the bowling club end 
Again, he got a wicket last over and Ben was expensive. And a vital wicket, huge wicket, Melbourne Cup. Now it's Toby Brown on strike. Just dragged it down. Leg side, but must have got a bit of thigh pad. Plus a bit of something, or he's changed his batting stance, moved across or something. Got to get it in the right spots, mid shaft. Short, hit very fine. Fortunately, there's a fielder backward of square to cut that one off down in the fan zone for tomorrow's Premier League. Just a few people in the fan zone, actually. Looking forward to that tomorrow. The music will be pumping again. Yeah. That's my mate, Chris, over there, watching on with his son, who is doing junior practice this morning before this game began. Made of mine at the Knights. I know how much you love talking about Friday Masters League. We, Actually, don't, we don't talk about it. I've got some. Uh, I've got some breaking news about. Uh, There's no such thing. No right. one cares about news from Friday Masters, folks. Old people do, like me. I'm old. I don't care. You can come play. Shan't be doing that. Need a break. Full toss, and that's the first maximum of the day as it sails over our head and out the back. Goodness me, poor piece of bowling and just absolutely taken advantage of from George Loop. And with that, he goes into the 80s. Brings up the 150 for the Nomads as well in very fine style. Straight over our heads. That's the replay. Full. He's on middle, but he just got down on one knee and dispatched it. Back live, he's going to try again, and he will get a four this time. Just Another poor piece of bowling, got exactly what it deserved. 11 off the over, two balls remaining in the 23rd, getting expensive for the Tartars. 11 off this one. They take the big wicket that they needed, mm. and since then, it's just been poor. Poor. True. We're going to have a look at the Hong Kong after this. If it's going to continue to put in new towers. Over the wicket, shorter, faster. That's a in the air, and that's gone all the way as well. Well, if this is not Mitch Shah's last over for the season, I'm a bad judge. That's just terrible bowling. Just short again. Full advantage from George Loop. Absolutely terrible bowling from the Tartars. They take the big wicket, and since then it's just been poor. Full credit to George Loop, taking full advantage of it. But he's been handed to him on a platter. He's on to 93. Drag that one down, Shah, and gave Luke all the time in the world to put it over the top of mid-wicket, over the top of our commentary position. And one ball remaining. Full of this time. Oh, that's a good ball. That was a good ball, and no run on it. A dot to end. 163 for three after 23. 17 off that over. 17. Having a look at the Hong Kong. There it is. It's climbed above. There's your ICC now. Yep. 17 off the over. A huge one. Two wickets falling in quick succession. Has not slowed the run rate really at all. Just the one. And even that went for six or seven. That over the 20th. And yeah, that was Nia's alley. And it's just built up from there. Helmet's coming out. Quick must be coming back on. It is going to Samad Khan now. He's been the pick of the bowlers, him and Gulam. We bring up the bowling figures. at the bowling figures here. You can see Gullam 1 for 24 at 3.3. Let's go down and have a look at the spinners. Sharma, none for 21 off 2. Mitch Shah, he's taken 2 wickets. He's gone for 48 off his 4 overs at 12 and over. So the 2 spinners have gone for 10 and a half and 12 respectively in the 6 overs between them. And he had 2 for 31 before that over. Mm. Making Shahi Samir's figures look good going at 9 and a half and over and we know he got punished in couple of overs so they've got to tighten this up Tartars if they want to give themselves a chance they've got to tighten up this bowling they've got to take wickets can Samad Khan be the man to do it he's going to need to be the man to do it starts with a bit of thigh pads gets away with that one just flicked through so no wide call Deep square leg on the boundary, fine leg. Trevetti's on the long on boundary. 
and he's inside the circle there. And again around the wicket. This one's eased onto the leg side. Work to do for Darren Lingani. Picks it up. Probably a chance for two there if they wanted it. They weren't that interested. Just get George Luke down on strike. Exactly. He's just 93 off just 64 deliveries. Run rate now up over seven. The defending champions have this game well and truly under control at this stage. We're in the 24th over and they've amassed 164 so far after being sent into bat. Leap going at 145 strike rate. Seven away from his century. Look at this bowling and fielding performance now and you wonder how Tata's finished top of the table. And the batting's been terrible the last two games. Over the wicket. Oh, that's no future in that one, Bodders. No, zero future in that. He had a go. I suppose he's got a license now, hasn't he? In the 93 and you're facing your 65th ball. Far away from getting the edge, but it's just not happening for the Tartars at the moment. Haven't seen any edges go through anywhere near the keeper's gloves. And something special from someone. Pulls that one around onto the leg side. Just a single, moves to 94. Tidy over so far from Samad Khan. Finish it off for the Tartars. He needs to. Well, if Loop can stay at the non-strikers end for the rest of this over, he'd fancy himself to bring up his 100 first ball of the next. Got to throw somebody at him, right? With the spinner on. We haven't seen Devung yet have a bowl. Or Ahan. They've got to try somebody. Yeah, they do. Summer card to Toby Brown. Who just lofts that onto the leg side. Again, lots of work out here for Lungani. Right in front of the sound effects, Mike. You could hear Lungani's feet there. <laughs> the sprigs dug in and yeah. he slowed down and picked it up. That's a good piece of fielding. Just a single. Three singles. From the first five deliveries. Loop on 94. And back on strike. And a big six down the ground to bring up that treasured 100 in the grand final. Here comes Samadhi, back in his wicket loop. Short, crunched, four. That's a beautiful boundary. He moves to 98. And he ends what was a very tidy over for Samad Khan. Another seven runs coming from it. 24 done, 11 remain. Nomads 170 for three. You just mentioned Devung not having had a bowl yet. I think he's taking his hat off now and they're going to give it to Bolsara from the bowling club end. Try another option, another quick spin. It just hasn't worked at all. They're going to introduce another quick. Try to break this partnership. The one thing in the Tartars favour and there isn't much at the moment so what is it seems to be a batter's track there's not a lot of movement zipping around with the new ball not a lot of spin to be honest with you bushy to be perfectly frank the bowling has been that bad and there's been that many loose balls given that it hasn't made it that difficult the pressure hasn't been nomads. applied no there hasn't been energy in the field there hasn't been, I mean, you're in a final, right? There hasn't been a great deal of energy in the field. There's not a great deal of chat. It's just like going through the motions out there. They've got to lift. They've got to find something from someone. Can it be Bolsara? Brown on strike. Watching from the other end at the moment. Easing the strike. And that gets a big, thick edge for. He's hit it well, actually. Straight off the face of the bat. Bolsara full outside off stump. Four runs. 174. I thought originally he might have got a bit of a fluky edge on it. But no, he's just crunched that through backward point. Now, Bushy, there's 10 overs after this one. Yep. They've been going at around 10 and over. You're looking at 274. You're looking at least that. Possibly more without wickets. 
Alsara's just pushed that one outside across the left hander. It's gone for a wide, according to umpire Vasher. What is that? I mean, uh, at three down, you can't take 300 off the table. It's fair. Swing the bat at it. We move into the final 10 overs. That's, that one there got a bit of an edge, but it's going to go same result. Four runs in the same position. Yep, so nine off two balls. You saw on the Hong Kong before, the amount of double figure overs that have been throughout this innings. Yes, that one was a bit top edge, but he went hard at it. There's no one there. It was over the top of Vishal Sharma's head. It was a backward point. Alsara in again. Comes down the wicket. Goes high. This might be a wicket. And it is. Number four for the Tartars. And it's Brown that's got to go after all that big hitting. Yeah, he just got the 18. But he got it in very quick time. It's a wicket that the Tartars desperately needed just to stay anywhere in touch with this match because it's totally getting away from them with poor bowling. Picked up the wicket there as Brown was going large into the leg side earlier in the over, two fours into the offside. Connor Hickey coming out now. Did you see that little stat that popped up on the, uh, the screen there, Bodders? No, mate. They, they got a 50 partnership. Just in that time. Just, just, just in that time. Yeah, yeah. 126 was the uh, third wicket fell so yeah. from Melbourne Cup. So they 53. That's at a very, very fast clip. But Devang Balsari gets the breakthrough. A nice catch for Farouk Saeed out there at deep mid wicket. Now, Big someone's score. got to really stand up here for the Tartars. Really stand up and try to go through the rest of this on, Nomads Stand innings. Send the spinning Keep ball now. They can take six for 20 and keep them around the 200 mark. It's back game on again. Still 10 and a half overs to come. Plenty of time for the Nomads to accumulate a stack more runs. They did get the wicket of the very dangerous Brown. And George Loop still out there on 98 off 67. A lot of field changes. Long offs coming up inside the circle. Bolsara, he'll bowl to Connor Hickey. Four wide, four wicket. Oh, no! It's going to be called. What's umpire Basher doing? Calling a dot ball. Slight misfield behind the stumps by the keeper there. Walsh, but no buy given away. In the Div 2 final potters, USRC have lost no more wickets. They've still got six down and they've... Brought up the 250 in the 34th over. They're 253 for six. Oh, that's a big, big score at yeah, Mission big, Road. Big total they've posted there for the Lancers to chase. Back here, that's a bit faster. Sh it's shorter. Gets a dot. First two legal deliveries were looseners, but fought back well, Bolsara. Yeah, has indeed. Has indeed. Wicket backed up by a couple of dots for Connor Hickey. Doesn't need to do anything silly right now. Just face out this last ball and give it back to Loop to face the first one of the next over. Who's on 98? Still for that treasured century. Just check your stats. Has George got a century this season? And look at the over break. And that's just dab down. Good so Dave, Dave. Hickey gets off the mark. Will retain the strike. A wicket over for the Tartars, but also 10 runs still coming from it. 25 done, the Nomads, one, oh, 180 for four. Even after the wicket bushy, there doesn't seem to be the energy out there for the Tartars. Yep, we can see, we did say that 50 partnership came off 26 deliveries, 53 runs. 26 deliveries between Loop and Brown. Departed on 18. Hickey on strike. But pulls out of it at almost the last moment. George Loop has scored 293 runs this year with a highest score of 82 not out. Oh, so this is his highest score of the season. Saved yeah. it for the final. Yeah. 
Very nice. He's popped that up in the air. It could be a chance. It's not, though. Yeah, it was it just a big leading edge and it's just gone over the head. He's, he's a big man, Connor Hickey. He's a big, strong man. It looked like that was going to go straight to the fielder there at mid wicket, but it just cleared his hand. Vishal Sharma was never really a chance in the end. Anyway, that brings George Loop on strike. He's on 98. Exciting times. Can Samad Khan spoil his party? No run there. We saw last over Samad bowling tight. And occasionally, just the loose one goes to the boundary. He started tight again. Unlucky not to get a wicket with his first ball at his fifth over. Backs it up with a dot. It's hit well by Loop again, but picked out Bolsara in the field straight to him. So no runs available. He stays on 98 and resets. That one, there's a dot as well. Yeah, flashes outside the off stump. Sort of looking at the umpire, hoping for a wide. It's always inside the tram lines. Unusual, you haven't seen dot, dot to loop very often this innings, besides those first 10, 11 balls outside of that. It's been a run machine. No wickets to his name, but you'd say some has been the pick of the bowlers for the Tartars so far. And again, some of a result, not a lot of movement away, but no footwork. Yeah, unlucky not to pick up the edge of loop on that one or the one before. I've said that a few times in his bowling yeah, overs. Some odd can't. Just luck's not on his side today. Can't find the edge. Sunshine. Yeah, beaming down. So loop on 98. Looked a bit nervous the last couple. Full this time. Again, hits it straight to Devon Bolsara for a dot. Four dots in a row. Haven't called that for a while. No, certainly have not. Loop just stalling on 98. Trying to find a way through for a boundary to bring up that big 100. Can Samad Khan clean him up last ball of this over? Oh, again, it's three in the over, Bushy. How can he not find the edge? It's that kind of day for the Tartars and Samad Khan, but one run off the over, I don't think. I think that is the smallest amount. Bring the Hong Kong up. Let's have a can look. We have a look at the Manhattan. I don't think we've had anything smaller than that over. No, we haven't. No, we had one, one equal, the fifth over. Yeah, there's been no maidens. No, no well bowled from Samad. Absolutely. Bolsara now. Took a wicket in his previous. Connor Hickey out there looking to establish himself. He's two off four. Two runs at this partnership off nine deliveries. It's a good little fight back from the Tartars after the wicket fell. It's going to be another dot ball. That's six in a row, an over of dots. Yeah, it's a good little spell here for the Tartars, Bushy. This is what they needed to do after every other wicket had fallen. And yeah. They're finally doing it after the fourth wicket. That's fell. right. When, th when that third wicket fell earlier, the, the bowling for the next couple of overs was just terrible. Yeah. Smashed a 53-run partnership yeah. of 26 deliveries. Yeah, got it really away from them. But here, the two quicks, so far, uh, I know Bolsara went for 10, 10, but he did take that wicket. Comes forward. Shot. Hits hard. Well, it, get, it didn't make it all the way to the boundary in the end. No. Cut off by Farouk. Did look like it was going to off the face of the bat. It was pulled up. Now loop. Gets his chance to bring up his 100. Face five Bolsara. deliveries last over. All yeah. dots. Yeah. Making it nervous for everyone yeah. watching on. Been watching on YouTube or the Nomad's dugout to my left. Our left. Also your left. We're up on the balcony here at Calhoun Cricket Club. Plenty of people up there watching. They won't be as impressed with what's going on as the Nomad's tent is. Loop taking his time to get ready. Stavang comes in from the bowling club end. Full. Oh, he oh. just chopped that out. Could have easily gone back onto his stumps there, Bushy. It didn't. He gets through and he goes to 99. Oh, a big inside edge. Could have easily played on. That kind of day for the Tartars. Yeah. Yes, indeed. Run rate. 
now down below that seven mark. We go through this little phase of a new batter and another batter in the high 90s. So Hickey back on strike, he's dealing in singles at the moment. And he'll be dealing in a four here, I'd suggest. He's hit that very nicely. And it is a boundary. Yeah, that was short from Bolsara there, and Hickey played that really well. Just ran it off the face of the bat. Down for four. There's no third man down there. It's a very short boundary. There is now. Got the bombs, got the bombs. You can hear Arhan Trevetti and the effects mic standing right next to it. Giving good support to Zod Devon. Yorker length. Diving effort. There's no run there. If, oh, don't do that, George. There was a bit of confusion. George was trying to get through for one, and Hickey quite rightly sent him back. That would be a disaster to be run out on 99. Yeah. So don't do anything silly. Just see out this ball. Let George face the next Samad Khan over. See if he can't push a single to get his 100. Final delivery of the 27th. Short and fast. Slashes it, it gets nothing on it. Six off that over. And after 27, the Nomads are 187 for four. Yeah, George Loop will be on strike on 99. I'm assuming he'll stick with Samad Khan after that last over. He's bowled five overs now, so going to continue with him, you would think. Bodders over at the Div yeah. 2 final. Mm -hmm. 35 overs done, USRC Tigers. 272 for seven. Oh, that's a great score for them. Massive. Yeah, great score. Just saying they'll be up in Div 1 next year. As will the Lancers. Lancers top the table in Division 2. They've got a mountain to climb there. 7.77 7 runs per over that was. Summit card. Loop. Oh, that could be it. That, that was a pull throw by Devang. But again, if it had hit, it would be out. But it was nowhere near it. Again, massive shout from Loop. Yeah. Wait, no. Stays on 99. I think he's got one run off his last eight or nine balls, probably. Yeah, Hickey desperately wanted to get that single for it, but almost came too far down the track. Another dot to Samad Khan. There's going to be the runs. There's the single to bring up the 100 for George Loop. The Nomad's tent erupts. Man, isn't he happy about it? And so he should be. In the grand final, he came in at number three on the third ball after the wicket of Luke Voice. He was slow early, he was one off 10 or 11, or maybe even 12, and he's brought up his 100 off 75 deliveries and done a wonderful job for his nomads. Yeah, he's got 100 and the team's got 188. Right. That's a pretty handy knock. Yeah. That's good, he would have dreamt about that last night, coming here today and being sent into bat. Now, Connor Hickey on strike. That's gone down. Has he got some bat on that one? We'll find out. Oh, direct Run hit. Out. I don't think he was out, though. No, it was a good chance. I mean, Will Walsh did fumble through at the stumps. From our vantage point, we've got a very good one. It looked like Luke was safe through. He's buys in the end. There was a little fumble behind the stumps. Walsh hit them, but Luke had scrambled through. Good decision from umpire Vasher. need loop out now stating the obvious bushy covered in red dust full toss hit straight back gets away with that one so much now you can see connor hickey who's just come out in his fresh whites george loop in his non-fresh whites and they're two different shades yeah yeah look like they're on different teams actually yeah, it's almost like a, a brown uniform mm. red like dust loop. yeah loops wearing colors <laughs> matches his shoes actually uh, someone can't loop. Gives himself some room and punches that hard. Great stroke, four runs. I'll tell you what, the, the best thing about this knock so far is how he's been able to find the gaps. Go boys, go he's boys. been five metres left, five metres right of the fielders on the boundary nearly every time that he's hit it out there. It's been wonderful. You watch him on this one. He gets himself, gives himself some room so he doesn't hit it to long on or hits it square. Uh, cuts out before mm. we see it, but gave him that angle to go 
straight. He's loved that spot, both leg and off. That one's going to go for a maximum. Got onto that one. That's a six. Oh, yeah. Samad Khan put it in the slot. And Loop says, thank you. I will have some of that. Hoiks him over. Long on. Wide of long on for the short boundary for six. All sudden 10 runs off the final two deliveries. This partnership's up to 20 off 21. And Pressure's relieved again. Scores on 199. What are we? 199 for four after 28. They've still got 42 balls up their sleeve. There's the Hong Kong. There's the Hong Kong up there. A couple of tight ones after the wicket where the TARDIS pulled it back and now loop just put it back where it was most of it you can see all those 10 runs and over 10 pluses throughout the innings it's huge Hickey on strike Ivan Bolsara will continue from the bowling club end gets a nice Yorker length there even shape back in it's gone Rush has given him it's given an inside edge it did move back after it went past the crease and he's given it for an inside edge taken by Will Walsh and the wicket falls Devang strikes again yeah, hard to pick it up from here where we're sitting. Just sort of looking at the replay. Connor Hickey must have got a little bit on it. Didn't seem to be uh, any surprise or complaints from him. Vasher gives him out. That's the fifth wicket. I mean, Tartars have just got to find a way to roll through this now and not let them get more than another 20 or 30, right? They've got to get loop. They've got to find a way to get loop. Iceman's coming in at number seven. Aryan Chandra Romani. He can hit a big ball the replay here you can see it dart back I wasn't sure if it was pitch or just an inside edge but in the end the finger went straight up no complaints five down for those of you out there who don't know why Aryan Chandra Romani is the ice man I can never remember go on it was uh, semi-final of a World Cup qualifier under 19 Div 2 in Oman when we were Hong Kong were chasing runs needed something like 30 off 24 balls or whatever and uh, we're right on top, lost a couple of wickets. The Iceman came in at number seven and the game had turned and it was Oman were back on top. Whoever wins gets promoted to division one, makes the final. So it's everything to play for. The Iceman walks out, basically shaking, nervous as you like. First ball, a big ground in Oman, proper international cricket ground. First ball pitched up, the Iceman bang, straight down the ground six. And the whole match turned on its head just with that one cricket shot. And we got across the line, and he got second last over. And he got a new nickname. Yeah. And he ended up getting, I don't know, 17 off six balls or seven balls or something. Did you give him the, the game. nickname? I did give him the nickname. There you go. Well, the Iceman's on strike. Devang just eases that one beautifully. I was, com I was commentating that game. Yeah. And, um, and it just came to me straight away. He just had nerves of steel in ice, a pressure situation. Ice in his veins. He did ice in his veins. He's forever, he's the Iceman. Well, that brings up the 200, the Iceman does, with his single and getting off strike. Brings the red dusted George Loop back on strike. Tartars haven't figured out how to get him out yet. That one's not going to be out either. It's going to fall short of long on. That's the 12th man, Darshan Shah. 13th man, in fact. It's a rare occasion where he didn't get it over the top of mid wicket and run away well, for four again. He just hit it a little bit straighter that time. That's where he likes. Yeah. Uh, that time. Fortunately, Darshan was right back on the rope, so no chance of a catch. So far, tidy over again. Vung needs to bowl this one out. Three more deliveries in the 29th. Two singles to start with. Gives him a short one. That's guided down to deep third. Be another single. And that's exactly Chandra Romani's job at the moment, is just get out there, get ones, get loop on strike, and let him go with full license. Absolutely. It's a job for anyone that's been coming in since George has been out there. Others have given chances or half chances. I can't recall George really doing too much wrong. Lofts that one. That's into his favourite little spot. One bounce. Four. Yep, four or five times now he's got exactly that spot for exactly the same result. We don't like ball chasing, but at this point you'd have to someone there right without a doubt i'd say three boundaries ago i mean he's made it obvious that's his favorite shot that's his go-to yep cut it off make him go straight up at the moment deep square leg out here has been doing nothing yeah move him straighter bowl full 
delivery. Pace over the top of that one, I think. So finishes off with a dot. Seven runs and a wicket that over. 29 done. No mads, 206 for five. Yeah, well, they're truly on top, the defending champions. Having a look at the bowling figures there, and it doesn't read well. Gullum. Yeah, who's over there in the red vest. Injured. Wonderful. Half injured, one for 24. Can't off expect seven. him to bat. So. Samad Khan, he's bowled six overs. He's been good. Little, a couple of loose ones, but he's overall he's been good. He's gone for under a run of ball. The spinners, massively expensive. Niaz Ali, unusually, going at over a run of ball himself. Well, he's going to bowl now, so we need to peg that back. He's got two overs left in his spell. This is where the Tartars need Ali to take, and he's capable of it. We've seen it so many times over the years. He's got to take three or four wickets in these two overs. Yeah, and he has to target the ice man. He's yeah. on strike. Keep George down the other end. Get the new batter out. Bring a new batter in. And try to contain this under 250. Here is Niaz Ali for Tandramani. Full bottom hands that one, but just guides it down to long off in the end for a single. Again, he's done the right things. Single first ball. He's got a single every ball he's faced. That's his job. Get loop down there. Loops on 115. Shorter, crunched, straight to long off though. They'll just get the single again. Rotate the strike. George is getting a little tired out there. Faced 82 deliveries crunched 116 runs probably happy to have a rest let the young fella have a go and again lofted in the air but doesn't find any players they're all back trying to protect the boundary yeah, i'm a little bit surprised they're not changing the field for when chanda romani's on bringing more, more attacking yeah bring an extra one up just try to cut off that single through mid wicket which he took there and put a little bit of pressure on him yeah get everyone back the loop no problem who is on strike gets a yorker length chopped out to repeat another single. At this rate, Tartars will be happy with six singles in an over. Yeah, very much so. Run rate back up over seven at the moment. He hits that one harder, but I'm just going to say rinse and repeat. It's either long on or long off. Sending them through for a single. One ball left in the 30th. Loop on strike. And that's lofted. That's hit hard again. One bounce down to Samir. Six singles off the over. 30 done. The Nomads, 2-12 for five. Yeah, singles everywhere there. Chandra Romani doing his job. George Loop not being able to get anything away to the boundary, but they kept the scoreboard ticking over. See the partnerships, 106, and then a really quick fire. 53 partnership from Loop and Brown. To 20 and now 13 already between these two. Five overs to come, 212. The Tartars need to find a way and take five for 20, really. Bushy mentioned it earlier. Luke really hasn't given a chance so far. He's played a missed outside off a little bit, especially to Samad Khan. He was unlucky not to pick up an edge. Bolsara off a shorter run. As now Bushy, I've just noticed, you look at the time, it's 3.15. And we're five overs. Tartars are five overs short of done. Now there will be some time allowances, but I'm not sure there'll be enough time allowances for five. Which means we could be on for some penalty runs on top of this, and that would just really rub salt into the wound in a grand final. I've seen a bit of that here at Callan Cricket Club of late. Not by Callan. That's in the air. It should be taken, and it is. Devon gets another wicket. Good catch from Niaz Ali, and six wicket falls for the Nomads. Yeah, George Loop goes trying to do the right thing for his team just going hard at everything went hard at that and he's caught 118 off 86 what a tremendous performance with the bat from George Loop 118 pro part of 212 at this stage and he's been absolutely wonderful looks slightly pooped as he's walking off as well Bushy yeah, he's going to need to get out the uh, laundry the heavy duty laundry detergent on those clothes so yeah. a shade of KCC pitch Massive standing ovation from the crowd here. And he's earned every one of them. Every clap he gets, he's deserved. He's absolutely wonderful. Devang Balsara off a short run. Now you've got Vasha talking to Niaz Ali out there as well. I don't think Niaz 
saw it to start with. It was, no. it, it was stationary, and they went, oh, wait, this is my catch. Hang on, it's coming. Yeah, he got there in the end. It just ballooned, really, to him. All of a sudden, the Vung's got three for. And the Nomads are six down. Klein out there now. I said they've got to find a way to take five for 20. They'll take a one for none. Oh, that's quick. Oh, that's gone. It's beaten everything. Did that hit anything? Just seemed to take off. No, it's gone for buys. It's gone straight through Will Walsh. Go boys, go boys. This must have moved significantly. Right back, go lads. Every run. That's what you really don't want. You take a wicket, you need to take five for 20 to put yourself in the game, and then you wicket four buys. To be honest with you, from where we're sitting, I'm not really sure what happened then. Anyway, Bolsara again. Short. Oh, feathers the bat at that one point. It was a very strange shot. Go boys, go boys. Just backed into it and yeah. poked. Again, it was another quick one from Bolsara. Yeah, he's bowling well. Kind of backed off it, really. Just going out to square leg. To That's my mind back. I think he started with a four wide four, and he's bowled very well since. Yorker length, then just Dave. eases it for a single to get off go lads, go the mark. Lads. I can't believe there's not going to be some penalty runs. Hasn't been a lot of sixes. There's a few little delays at times. It won't be for a full five, but it's got to be one or two at least. Maybe that's why Devung's coming off the short run up. That's lofted. Doesn't go anywhere near long off. So another single. No, that was the only thing that brought it to my attention, Bushy. To be honest, I wasn't even watching the clock. I just saw Dev come off a short run, and I thought, oh, there's time pressure going on. And by yeah. the time I looked up, it was already 3.15. So... A good five overs short, a 30 overs bowled at 3.15. So I think two or three overs, maybe looking at five or ten run penalty, perhaps. Oh oh, that's the last. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you, you, can, you, you go in, it looked like they are on for 280. You restrict them to, say, 240, and all of a sudden they get an extra ten runs. Niaz Ali, he's coming in quickly as well. No time to reset. That's in the air. That should be out as well. Devang Bolsari getting underneath and another wicket falls. The Nomads 2.18 for 7. That's what they need. That's the second one. We said they need to take 5 for 20. They've taken 2 for not many. Haven't added it up. 2 for 7 or 8 or something like that. So they're on track. The Iceman goes trying to do the right thing. The team man play. Didn't get hold of it. And we move through. Mark Farmer coming out now at number 8. Oh, num number nine, sorry, we're seven down now. The Nomads. So it's, you know, Goddamn from a Tata's perspective, Bushy, if you roll through this, you take, you've take you taken two. If you can take another three quick wickets, you're going to be chasing a big score, but you've pulled it back and you can yeah. go in with some confidence, right? Absolutely. Could have been 300. Oh, 300 was on. It was on. Mark Farmer, I had a chat to Farms during the internationals. Very busy man. He's coaching Hong Kong China A, coaching the other 19s, pathways manager, number nine bat for the Nomads. Second child on the way, I understand as well. Blimey, he's a busy, busy man. It's all happening. Niaz Ali to Farmer. Finally gets a wicket, Niaz. Can't keep him out of the action. Farms will ease through for a single. Run rate now, just slightly under seven. That's where Tartars have to keep it all lower. Just need to take more wickets. Try to bowl them out from here, in fact. Oh, that's what I mean. They need to take five for 20. I think they've taken two for eight or nine since I said that. So Nihaz Ali <coughs> has the potential to run through a tail. Not bowling on leg stump like that, though. Get it outside off and allow it to swing back in. Very dapper Chris Carter coming into the ground to watch as well. He's just finished flying. Well, he tries to go big, Klein, but inside edges it through to square leg. They're going to push for two here. They're going to get it easy too. He will. Well run between Klein and Farmer. A bit of confusion out there between the two fielders, and Farouk ended up being the one to take it. They got through for the easiest of two. It was very well run. So, Botters. Nomads were 212 for five. 
mainly six to get fell. Okay. So at the moment, it's been two for nine. Two for ten with that wide. Well, I said they needed five for 20. So Ali's got to rip one through and take a awful middle stump out of the ground here for the Tata's sake. Bring up the eight. Slow four dot. One ball remaining in the 32nd. See the Professor Dan Pasco over there now. Oh, they're all down here, aren't they? Yeah. Maybe they've got a training yeah, room I tomorrow. Think Carter and Pasco will quite often do a session the day before the game. Ali, that's just defended by Klein. New bat being asked for by Farmer. Well, fairly tidy over in the end. Four runs from it and a wicket for Niaz Ali. And we're 32 done. Nomads are 2-2-2 two, two, two for 7. Yes. Now you think from a timing perspective, well, you passed it now, so it doesn't matter, but the real problem is the spin was so bad. The spin bowling was so poor earlier. They bowled a lot more quick than they probably anticipated because they haven't been able to get through seven overs from each of their spinners. Could very well cost them in time penalties. I think the umpires have just come together having a chat about it. Basher's got his notebook out. Never a good thing to see. See the fielding team. Bolsara has gone back to not quite his full run up, but not a short run up either. Taking their time. Well, damage is done now, isn't it, right? Damage done limitation. It's done, a, done a quarter. No, it's done at quarter past three. The, it gets measured at quarter past three. Oh how right. many over short you are. Well, chopped out, almost good chopped out out of the stumps. Walsh keeps it to another dot. Well, Sarah, all of a sudden, like I said, he started with a four wide four. And he's now by far the pick of the balls. Yeah, I mean, he's eyeing off a of Michelle here, isn't he, really? Three for 25, bowling to the tail now. Another okay, swing and a miss outside off. Very good boy. And you don't want to win the toss, send them in. They score well over 200, and you get over eight penalties. Another Yorker. Very good day, very good That's day. quick from Balsara there. Pretty sure Mark Farmer thought he was turning around to see his off stump tumbling away back down towards Will Walsh, but just outside off. I'll stand corrected, and if anyone's watching on YouTube, please tell me. But I think if you bowl the team out, the over penalties don't count. Oh, yeah. there it is. That's the Yorker. Went straight through, and Farmer's got to go. Devon gets his fourth, and the eighth falls for the Nomads. They're 2-2-2 two, two, two for eight. I think I'm right in saying that, Bushy. If they can bowl them out... I'm then, not sure. Then um, I think there'll, be, there'll be no penalty runs. But they're already past the time they should have. Well, that's the sort of thing that's confusing me. But I'm because if they're ahead. going the slow over eight, but they bowl them out before three fifteen, then sure, no props. But um, I think they're in a little bit of trouble. Come on, anyone out there? Matt Collins, where are you? You can tell me. Jake McCauley, I've seen you've been on the YouTube chat. I don't know what's. Someone super knows the rule book. Rule, yes. rule book better than. Better than Botters. Anyway, well, we'll find out from you said, Devang, you said Devang was um, on for a Michelle, and now he's got his fourth. Yeah, he only needs one more. One of two. Pick of the wicket takers. Botters. Uh, eight down now. You keep calling the next two balls. I'm going to duck over, and I've, I've found another umpire that I might be well, able to get you, okay, for. And just before you go, though, I said they needed five for 20. What are they now? Five for ten. Oh, three, three for ten. Three for ten. Yep. Okay, Bolsara. New batter, Shah. They've been poor at times, the Tartars. They really have, but this is a good fight back. They're going to be ta chasing a large total. But they fought back well. A little bit more energy. Might be too little too late, but at least it's there. Oh, off the gloves. Will Walsh couldn't get to it. Oh, just out stretch. He stretched as far as he could, young Will Walsh. Couldn't get a glove on it. It's gone away for four. Yeah, unlucky there for Bolsara. 
Very unlucky. Could have had a second in that over. Just ballooned up a little and Will just couldn't get across there in time. It goes away for four for Klein. Shah will be on strike. He's coming at number 10. We're going back to Samad Khan, who's done well. He's tried hard. He beat Luton numerous times outside the off stump. Probably five or six times, to be honest. Could have easily picked up an edge. Didn't. Luton went on and made a big hundred. But set this Nomad's innings up. The defending champions. Right in front of the game here at the moment. And the Tartars wrap this up, bowl them out inside the 35. That one kept a bit low actually there. Dot ball, crucial dot ball for the Tartars. You're back, Bushy. I am. I have the answer. I'll let them ask the umpire's brother. Yep. Um, yeah, doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if they bowl them out. bowl them out now. It's still going to be penalties. It's what happened at 3.15. What happened at 3.15. Yeah. Okay. Oh, just punches that down the leg side, That's does some hard. Can't be giving away runs at this point in time. Not at all. What happened while I was over there? There was a um. Because the runs have crept up. Yeah, there was a boundary off the last ball. Bolsara got one to really take off and got the gloves of Klein and Will Walsh full stretch to his right. Couldn't get a glove on it. Ran away for four. Oh, bottom of the bat this time. Lucky not to chop that one off. But was told there's going to be plenty of good cause for the delay a lot of bat changes glove changes yeah helmet changes. No, definitely good cause whether whether it's enough yeah, yeah he's, he's got him he's got the edge, top edge he's yeah. walked before the finger even went up shah's out nine down now one more wicket for the tartars wouldn't that be a turn up after what's been going on today that they get they bowl the nomads out inside 35. well i said they needed five for 20 to keep themselves in it they're four for 16 so far oh coach potters Nostradamus Potters. Oh, yeah, maybe they can't have been a little bit too far. But anyway, the point being here, Bushy, yes. is the Tartars have put themselves back in the game. At the moment, if they can take this wicket now, yep. it's about six and a half runs and over. You bat well, that's possible. Yeah. Yep. There was a point where the Nomads were going to be well over 300 and the game was gone. Yep. Now, you've sent them into bat. If yep. they can take this last wicket, around that five for 20 that I was talking about, they go in with their tails up. Well, they, they should do. They have to bat. Which, has been which they haven't done in the last two games. Quite precarious. Alrighty. We've got nine legal deliveries remaining. Not ready yet. Crowther on strike now. Ready to go. Ooh, almost got to the edge to start with. And it wasn't far away from the top of off as well. Dan Crowther's going to have a job to do with the ball. Whatever he does here is quite irrelevant with the bat. It's all about what comes next for Dan. He'll take the new ball, I would suggest. If we could get another 10, 15 on the board, that would be a bit of a stab to the heart of the Tartars going into the break. And again, Beat Crowther all ends up. Yes, it's not far away from... I'd try the Yorker. I'd, I'd try the Yorker. So 228. That said, if you could just do a dot ball now, it might give Devung a chance to get his Pfeiffer, his Michelle. If someone gets the wicket here, it'll ruin the Michelle. Oh, shoulders, arms through. Came back in at I him love too. it in the sheds. 34 overs done, Nomads. 228 for nine. Having a chat off here. Oh, Bolsara. First ball of the last over. Can he get his Michelle? He's got five more legal deliveries to get it. Just having a chat with one of the umpires not working today. To be honest, I really have no idea what he said. But I think the summary is there will be good cause. Might be one or two overs maximum penalty run. And there's possibly none. Possibly none. Yeah. Umpires can decide that one 
minute of good cause it gets yeah. one over. So it's up anyway, to you. Anyway, we'll, find out. we'll figure it out in between the change of innings. But at the Five moment, more legal deliveries the score we'll is out. 229. Lines in. Just going to try to ruin the Michelle here. Block it out. Four more balls. I'm just wondering if the Nomads were thinking like I'm thinking about just don't get bowled out so we get the penalty runs because. Well, there's runs there to be had. Just the single. It's just funny that they're all up and cheering defensive shots in the final over. So. I wonder if their thought process is the same as mine. Well, anyway. Dan back on stroke, yet to get off the mark. He's got three balls to face to survive. Ah! Big appeal for LBW, not out, says umpire Basher, and he'll get off strike with a leg bye. 230 now. What's that? Four for nine, four for 18, four for 19. Four for 19 when I called for five for 20, yeah. Two balls remaining. Very short run up this time for Devang. Dan wanted a single, wasn't there to be had. He was very keen for it, it went straight to the field at mid-wicket. Oh well, one ball to come. It's been a fantastic innings for the Nomads after the, they were sent into bat. There we go, single off the last ball. They're going to finish on 2-3-2 two, two for nine. And they're right on top of the Nomads, right on top of the, the this game the Nomads are, the defending champions. Having said that, the Tartars have put themselves back in the game, Bushy, where 300 above looked, looked most likely. As the now, umpires come across and say, don't end the innings because they're going to have a big discussion about if this penalty runs well. They have that discussion. The umpires will have a look at the batting card and opening the batting today. Voice and Rosley. Voice did not last very long. Out caught and bowled. And Rosley should have been the same about two overs later. He got 46 in the end. But the big name today for the Nomads, 118 off 86. It is George Loop. And he put on well, more than half of the score for the Nomads in the end. They did their 35 overs, 9 for 2, 3, 2. Yeah, big score from the Nomads. They'll be very happy on the flip side. The Tartars, they were terrible at times with the ball, but they brought it back, and they'll feel they're a chance going into the break. The bowling figures, a couple of good ones in there. Gulen one for 24. Devang Balsara, a leading wicket-taker. Last bowler used four for 33. A lot of very expensive ones, especially the spin there. Samad Khan, he tried hard. He dragged it back at times as well, one for 36. That's where we stand in the final of the Saturday Division One Championship. Tartars versus Nomads, top of the table versus defending champions. Nomads put into bat, 232 on the board. The Tartars will need to come out and bat their best. They require 233 runs for victory. Join us after the innings break for all the action live on Cowland Cricket Club YouTube.
All right, welcome back to the Kowloon Cricket Club. Big Saturday Division One Grand Final, where the news is there were penalty runs, three overs worth. And what was 232 has become 247. Taran Longani out there opening with Devang Balsara. Shah opening. Longani punches well. Gets one. Gets off the mark. Gani, very solid bushy, not known for his quick run scoring. He's going to need it today, that's for sure. Now we'll have an, you might see on the screen it still says 246, but it's definitely 247, so 248 to win. Big score, I mean they did four for 20 there at the end and then gave away an extra 15. Anyway, yeah. we're back into the innings. The Vang on strike and he just watches the first one, dot. I mean really in a grand final, you win the toss, send them in, and you end up with 15 penalty runs. The opposition's already got over 200. You're not really giving yourself a great chance. Finish top the ladder, earn the home final. Imagine if they score 235. Yeah, that's right. Devastating. Anyway, that's a long way away at the moment. In the first over. That one straight down leg for a wide. First extra in the books. Going to need a solid opening partnership here. They haven't batted well as a unit the last two games of the season. This one's guided. They got deep third coverage on the rope, so it'll just be another single. Three runs off the first three legal deliveries. Yeah, Bush in their last game, they played the Gat Ramblers, who they rolled for 67. The Tartars bowled Ram Ramblers all out for 67. Tartars were 7 for 70 as winners. The game before that, Jin Sung rolled them for 101 and went past them in the 26th over, so 22nd over, sorry. So they're going to need a totally different performance with the bat today. Yep, need to start a platform with the openers. Mungani and Bolsara will need to stay out, not lose early wickets. I think it's in the commentary position, but not with a headset on. Arthur Chu. Arthur Chu. Yeah, got that one right. For those, he features a lot in the uh, for those podcast out there, this week. It's never Arthur Choi. That's a totally <laughs> different, totally different man. Shah. It's Arthur Chu who's with us in the commentary position. Well, I do believe Arthur's um, heading to greener pastures, so you won't have to call his name for much longer. Which would be very much a shame. Leading wicket taker. Sunday League Division 2. I'm still going to be sticking around for a few more games at least. Won't say where and what he's doing. You'll have to keep getting that name right. In the Arthur podcast. Chu. Yeah. Ooh, oh, inside edge off Lagani. He's going to get one for it. He is. Four off the over. First one done. Tartars begin their massive run chase. The chase of a premiership. They need 248 after one over, they're four. There's the Hong Kong for the Nomads. And that one at the end, that's this that's penalty run. That's runs. the penalty run. <laughs> <laughs> that's the Highest score of the uh, innings. It's the new ICC or IFC. And it was actually missing one run. It's even higher than that. Yeah. Mark Farmer behind the stumps. We're going to spin early. The Nomads here. Well, they're like going to go to Klein. I tell you what, it's brave. Spin first up from the clubhouse end, short bound. I wonder if this is a tactic, actually. Saying, so, come on, we've got a big score on the board. Take us on down the ground. Well, they've got mid on, mid off inside the circle. And that's now being, a, yep, there they are, staying inside the circle. So, yes, they're going to ask. Taran Lungani to have a go. Noted, not a noted quick scorer, big scorer. No, that's right. Grind it out. No time to grind today. So have a go, they say. There's the first delivery. 
shoulders arms lets it through arm ball first up can't be shouldering arms for too long but light loop and um, Rossley did you've still got time you can take those few overs to get yourself in have a little look but then you have to accelerate like loop did Just watching him, Lungani. Not being lured yet. But what it is is racking up the dot balls for the Nomads. Carbon copies. Yeah. Clyde can bowl this all day and he'd be very happy. Tartars, on the other hand, seems to get bat on ball. Just going to bowl at the same spot and say, you come to me and exactly. match situation. He can just do that if he keeps his patience, Klein. Could be the first maiden of the game. Just keep putting it there. And it is. Yeah. A maiden. Great over. Six deliveries. All of them left outside off stump. Can't afford too many of them. After two overs, Tartars, four. And they were going at four and over, and now obviously they're going at two and over. The run rate required. See on screen the target is 248. Reminder, not 247 as listed on screen. Shah to continue from the bowling club end. First over went for just four. Well, Sarah on strike though. This time. And that one's going to be another extra in the books. Yeah, just dragging it down a little bit there, Shah, down the leg side of the right-hander. You can see the Wasp giving the Tartars a, just a 20% chance of running down this massive total. But they do have to give some credit to the Tartars and for fighting back and keeping it to what they did, but the penalty runs could be very costly. Very well, that's a good delivery. Dots. The Nomads are a solid unit, Bushy. Yes. The batting lineup that they've got. Shah opening with Klein, the spinner, and you've got Dan Crow that have come. The Iceman as well. Really solid unit. The dot ball there. Longani two off ten. Bolsara one off four. When you say solid unit, have a look down the, the full roster that they put out. You can select who's playing today and who's not playing but could play. Danny Matt, Shiv Matter. Yeah, of course, they're up at the under 17s grand final. Might have a look how that's going actually. Do that, and I'll have a look at the Div 2 final as well. Because at the moment, we're dealing in dots and singles here for the Tartars. Karen Mungani back on strike, two off ten deliveries. a deep square leg out on the ropes and a backward square leg there they're two outside the circle at the moment plus a deep third I should say three outside the circle another dot is there anything for me there bodice yeah so the under 17s nomads yep. up the hill after 35 overs in their grand final, four for 245. Oh, wrapped on the pads, a big appeal. Finger goes up, first wicket falls for the Tartars. It's Taran Lugani out for two, and the Tartars six for one in the third. 12 balls face from Lugani just for the two runs, and Sheroy Vasha had absolutely no hesitation in putting the finger up there. He goes LBW to Shah. This is not the start the Tartars were after. Chasing a massive score in the 240s. Left arm over the wicket. 
pitches in line, coming back, absolutely plumb in front. Sheroy Vashan, no hesitation. Looks like Samad Khan coming to the crease. He's right up in the runs. He's the top of the runs, isn't he, for the uh, fifth one? He is, he is. Well, he's he's, not, the he's not top of the average because he, he's played like 15 or 16 games versus the others around 9 or 10. He's put the runs on the board. He has indeed. He's averaging just above 40. A lot's going to rest on his shoulders now today. Just in that under-17s grand final, Bushy. Yep. 245, the uh, under-17s nomads. Yep. Veer Matur, 40. Shiv Matur, 85. Daniel Pankhurst, 42. Danny Mapp, 55 off 31. And they've got USRC Gunners, 2 for 25 after 5.5. Wow. So you think the under-17 nomads are going to be home. And the senior compatriots... Down in, in, up in Saturday Division 1. They're well on top here. 247 on the board, including 15 penalty runs. Tartars, 1 for 6. Over in Div 2 at Tinquang Road Recreation Ground, USRC Tigers put on 272 for 7 and 35. And the Lancers leading 273 for victory. Botters, they're in the 12th over, 38 for 4. Nearly bank that one for the Tigers as well, can't you? Oh, I might get a tip right this week. Yeah, maybe. You follow me, you'll get more right. Oh, hey, Tiger. He's a USRC Tigers. Drop ball first up to Samad there. That's the end of the third over. Three overs gone. Six for one. Two runs and a wicket in that over for the Nomads. They'll be very happy with that. The first wicket falling, Taran and Garni, LBW to Shah. Well, we saw the early wicket for the Nomads. It actually, it was earlier. It was the second ball at none for none. And then we saw the beautiful big 100 partnership. And that's exactly what Bolsara and Samad Khan have got to manufacture here this afternoon to give the Tartars a chance. And they've got to do it at a quick clip. Yes, that is a problem at the moment. The last time Klein had ball in hand, as he does now from the pavilion, and bowled six dots. Yeah, Lungani just shouldered arm six. Yeah. And it was LBW out the next over. What Devang's got to him. This time, bat on ball. A good diving effort in the field. Luke Voice there, I think. It wasn't necessary. The fielder behind him would have got it anyway, but it looked good. Getting himself in the game. Only faced the two balls earlier. This is true. <laughs> and now we're back to shouldering arms. Yeah. Devang watched all six deliveries from the other end, so he knows exactly what Klein's going to bowl. He's been he's bowled eight of the same deliveries. This time, quick single, tip and run through backward point. Khan on strike now, yet to get off the mark, only face the one delivery. Yeah, Samar Khan, good early call. Charging through to the danger end. Well, this could mix things up with the left-hander on strike now. And where Klein's been bowling will be right on his pads. They don't have any protection on the leg side in front of square. Yeah, they are now gonna push a deep square leg back wise that mid wicket short boundary could be target yeah i think samad will probably have a look this over and go the next Let's see and watches that one through as well he's getting some shape in obviously to the left hander he's, he's getting shape away to the right hander's client it's very tidy first 10 deliveries though just the one run off them full this time gets away with it good fielding again luke joyce and about the field. Full toss this time. Luke Voice can't get hands. He got some hand on it. Kept it to a single. Yeah, he probably saved three. That was it was travelling. Not a bad piece of fielding. Didn't get it absolutely cleanly, but got the Got a hand on it and saved the boundary. After four overs, it's eight for one. The run rate required is edging up towards eight already, Bushy. Yeah, two and over and has been for the last three overs. Runs not flowing as they did for the likes of George Luke and Matt Rosley. Shah will continue. Got the wicket last over he bowled. LBW on Taran Lungani, two. If they bring up the Hong Kong, <coughs> you'll see that uh, well, we've got Shah starting here. He's 
Yeah, at the moment, um, the Nomads really build a proper Hong Kong. Massive skyline, massive runs, plenty of overs with 10 and above. And at the moment, it's more like a low rise red fern in Sydney for the Tartars. Little double story terrace houses, really. Yeah. Well, the man had the Hong Kong for Tartars needs to be gentrified and quickly. Good line and length from Sharp. Not yeah. leaving it a lot, but he's just bowling it in the right spot. No runs coming. Again, Samad now eating up the dot balls. One off six. Wulungani two off 12. Top Bothara three off eight. Two of the runs are wides. Yeah. 25% of the score for the Tartars at the moment. Coming in extras. Comes down the wicket, gets an edge three, second slip. Couldn't get a glove on that one. The second slip, and it races away for the first boundary for the Tartars. Look, I've got to say, that's really good intent from Samad Khan. Understands the situation. Trying to get down the wicket. Take a bit of authority against Shah, who's bowling beautiful line and length. Squirts off the outside edge and just beats second slip. Far away. See him come dancing. Third slip would have gobbled that up, and yeah. I think they've put a third slip in. At least a gully. Got the boundary now and watch them. Same delivery though. Both bowlers from both ends are bowling the same line and length each delivery basically. Yeah. He's not able to play them. I mean, if the tar Tartars bat to the best of their ability, there's absolutely no reason why you can't run down this score. Okay? Eight and over is very doable. Whether you can do eight and over is very doable. Whether you can do eight and over for 30 overs is another thing. It's a full toss, but drops. And that's well driven in the end. That's going to go all the way for another boundary. And there's your eight off this over. Sketchy first four, but nothing sketchy about that one from some other can't. Punched it through cover. That was beautifully played, beautifully placed. Watch the replay. It's very nice. No edge on this one. Got the front foot forward, got to the full toss in the end, and Pick the gap, which we saw a lot of from the likes of George Luke. Just finding the gaps, that's where you've got to get your runs. One ball remaining in the fifth. And he's got his eight runs. That was very close to a wide, but just stayed inside the tram line to dot. So four dots and two fours, eight runs, a good one for the Tartars. 16 for one after five. Now you can see George Loops there, 118 off 86. Absolutely wonderful. That's flawless. Pulsara fought back. Taking four wickets. As we were discussing in the innings break, Rodders, they probably brought Devang on one over too mm. late or two overs too late. He didn't even bowl out his full seven. Now that total says 246 there. We're very confident it should be saying 247. Yeah, we, 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 it is 100% yeah. 247. Little glitch when the penalty runs went in. Missing a run off the end. I think somebody's missing a run off their score for the Nomads. Anyway, Klein will continue, and why wouldn't he? He's only had two singles off his bowling and 12 deliveries there was probably one in that if they wanted it a bit conservative and said no Balsara didn't want it in the end just had a birthday did Devang Balsara yeah 30 he was in the uh, Bushy's birthday bonanza Bushy's in the 8 for 52 podcast go back and listen on Apple and Spotify I actually saw him that night it was the night we recorded Thursday it was his birthday did he invite you to his birthday party? No, uh, we've been post. Let's just say I was post podcast and feeling quite cheery. I think he got a hug. You weren't shy. I can't quite remember. You weren't shy. Uh, anyway, he's still talking to me, so it wasn't too bad. I did wish him happy birthday. Now he needs a birthday knock. Yeah, he needs a birthday century. Bolsara really does. Has he been in the runs? Taking his season? time early. In the Saturday championship. <laughs> Many runs for Devon. We'll have a look. And stats will tell me shortly. That's shorter. That got what it deserved. Is it going to go all the way? No long on. We'll come around, cut it off near the fan zone, set up ready for tomorrow's Premier League double header. Coming on down, the fan zone will be open. The drinks and food tent will be open, cash bar from 11 a.m. And uh, we've got a great Premier League cricket. I'll tell you all about it after this ball. Samad Khan on strike, 9 off 10 now. 
He gets a full toss, drives very straight with that same fielder that was at long on, is now at long off for the left-hander. So just a single to end. Klein again, just two singles, miserly off his three overs. And after six, KCC Templars are 18 for one. So yes, tomorrow the double header for the Premier League T20. We've got in the morning, the Kowloon Cricket Club Premier women's team playing Lantau Premier. That kicks off from 10 a.m. and then from 2 p.m. I think so. It is 2 p.m. Yep. Uh, it'll be the KCC Premier versus USRC Premier. Fan zone, music blasting. Oh, absolutely. Great right. atmosphere. Uh, this, is this season's Cricket Hong Kong Premier League T20 is fun down here at KCC. Shark continuing from the bowling club end. So, Bodders, what did you find out about uh, Devang? Well, he hasn't season? played many games for them this season because he was season, away, he was away where he got, got married. married. Yeah. yeah at his wedding, so he missed a number of games through that. He's averaging just in the low 20s, so he needs to uh, he needs to have his best performance of the season today, let's put it that way. And he's very capable of it, we know that. Why wouldn't he? Two days after his birthday, and Samad Khan's on strike. Oh, that big swing and a miss. They've got the catches in place for that now. A little bit too tight there for Samad to play that shot. The Nomads have gone for the 7-2 offside field as well. You can see the deep backward square leg and a mid-on. They've got two slips in and I'd have a third in, to be honest. Well, that's where that went through last time for a boundary. There's that line and length from Shah. He's bolted beautifully into his fourth over now. He says went for 14. One of those was a sketchy four through third slip. One was a very nice drive, of course, but probably bowled better than going for 14. <laughs> oh, he knew nothing about that one. Inside edge went past his leg stump, no run. Yeah, he could have easily played it straight back on. As you said, he really didn't have much of a clue as the run rate now ticks above eight. The run rate required, that is. Klein's bowled three overs, one maiden, none for four, Bushy. Yep, he's had two singles off the other two overs that weren't maidens. He's bowling from so he's bowled, the clubhouse end. He's bowled 14 dot balls from the clubhouse end yeah. and four singles. Magnificent. Yep. Just what the Tartars needed to do in the first innings when they elected to bowl but didn't. Loose bowling all over the place. Well, I think Tartars bowled about six overs to spin and went for 100. Yeah. showing no, he's not getting a lot of spin he's maybe getting a little shape away with his slower deliveries but and it was because they had to bowl so many overs of pace because the spin the spinners didn't perform but, but they ended they up did, with 15 penalty runs they went for sixes and slowed the run rate down over rate down as well probably better the cop in the penalty runs than bowling the spinners this is true yeah he's bowling well as well Shah. good stuff the nomads maiden Another maiden, second of the innings score after seven overs is just 18. There we go. There's the Hong Kong. You can see it there. Now, not dissimilar starts. Correct. Um, but KCC, and then you can see how it just ramps up as Rossley and Loop got going, and that's exactly what these two need to do. They need to imitate, impersonate, and do exactly what Loop and Rossley did and build a big partnership in quick time. There's no need to panic at this point in time, but they've got to start going very soon. Bung on straight, gives that one some, gets past Luke Voice, he'll be cut off on mid-off. George Loop there in his orange yeah. boots. Oh, well, and his orange pants, that's how he's easily <laughs> identifiable after diving, <laughs> stopping getting run out. Samad back on strike now. Klein's got one of his two singles off the over already on S the first one. Samad's going to have a go here in a minute, Bushy. He'd have to. They pushed mid-on back to long on. Oh, just dabbles it for another single. Played that well. There was lots of room through square leg. Well, the backward square leg was on the rope. Comes in now to a backward point instead. Stays inside the circle. They're not so as worried. Huge gap of anything that's short between backward point and cover. There's an extra cover in as well. There's a huge gap. Anything short. And that's not short. That's well bowled. Got his two singles in this over already, so I'm mm. expecting four more dots. 
unless something miraculous happens. Full up. It's forward, but hits it straight to that extra cover position. Yeah, that's about. the new fielder that they just brought in a couple of balls ago, and uh, well placed there. Shorter this time, but can't do much about it. Hits it straight back to Clyde. That's a suggested going to see four dot balls after yeah, we've had two singles. Three of them, anyway, so far. We have Devong Bolsara handles his last ball of the over. Full toss. Whips it onto the leg side. Work to be for long on. Not going to push for two. Yes, they are. And good running in the end. There was definitely two in that oh, every day of the week. So, Klein went for four in the end off that over. He's bowled four overs, none for eight. Expe eight are done. Expensive over from Klein there. <laughs> Bowled four overs, none for eight now. Yeah, doubled. Yeah, that's right. Went from none for four to right. none to eight. Uh, after eight overs, the Tartars 22 for one. They require another lots. 226. Another lots. Another lots, yes. Many, many, many lots of runs. Yes. Many, many runs. And at the moment, these two in the middle can't seem to get away. Klein and Shah, who will continue into his fifth over so far. One for 14, including a maiden. Previous over. Starts with another dot. Oh. That was that was quite wide. It wasn't called wide. No, it, it was. was. He's bowled well, Sha. He's he bowling has. very well. Maybe you got a. He's mainly held that line. He's bowled so well that he's he's got one for free there because I think that was outside that white line. But I'm not the umpire. In the books, it's a dot. That's the line, and that one didn't shape away. That one actually kept on going. Yeah. Good delivery. Just been right on the money. Bolsara well, 7 off 18. Smart Khan 11 off 20. And they've done exactly what Loop and Rossley did. Now they've got to do exactly what they did next, which is accelerate. Can't accelerate if you watch them all sail past. Another dot. Bat on ball would be plus optimal. It's good bowling, though. No, oh, it's great bowling. So, not much they can do. Let's see off the new ball into the ninth over. This time, gets bat on ball, but hits it straight to the extra cover for a dot. Trying to have a look. Two to come in this ninth over. Just trying to figure out how many dot balls Shah's strung together now. He had a maiden last over. Oh, and again, tries to go big. Goes behind him, misses the stumps. Yeah, that inside edge could have easily gone on the stumps again. That's the second time that's happened to Samad Khan. Shah's given up a run. And the only one in this over so far. Still one to come. Just looking across at the Tartars dressing room, the tent. Looking anything but pleased. Slum shoulders over there at this point in time. He shouldn't be. Where there's life, there's hope. Eight or nine and over is very gettable here at Carolina Cricket Club. Target the short boundaries. Bat well. So far, no magic bowl beautifully. Fuller, good fielding. One run off the ninth. After nine, Tartars 23 for one. Yeah, another great over. Another fantastic over. That partnership needs to build and build quickly between Bolsara and Khan. Yeah, they've got to find a way now. They've got to get that scoreboard ticking over. Nomads are well up and about in the field. And I know he's bowling well, but you would have thought that Klein would have been the target and bowling from the pavilion I think, end. I think Samad's going to target him here. He's Go to the sight screen straight over his head if he can. Not at the moment. He's just bowling his good line and length. Yeah, he's just getting that line, uh, the length perfect to stop Samad coming down the wicket. He's just bowling that right speed to stop him coming down the wicket. Fuller this time. That was trying to go straight, I think, but he's crunched it through an offside 
spinning away down to the training nets for four. Yeah, more good luck than good management there from Samar, but it was great intent. If they had a traditional straight point in there, it would have gone straight down his throat. But luckily for Samar, the man is backward a point. It hit and it spun and it's run away to the boundary for a much needed boundary for the Tartars. Looking to go over the top of extra cover. Back live and back to dot balls. It's a confident drive. Didn't quite go well. No, that's what it was good intent and that's what the, they've got to show that now from now on. Got to do multiple. Got to be positive. Multiple boundaries. Short and fast, a down leg will be wide. It is umpire Royce McDonald puts both hands out. He just tried to run that off the face of the bat around the corner. There is a fine leg. He would have only got one anyway. He'll take the wide. Oh, it's a huge shout, a huge shout. Umpire Royce McDonald unmoved at this point in time. Mark Farmer could not have been more confident. He's been given. He has. He's put his finger up. He didn't put his finger up at all. He had a big, long, hard look at it, umpire McDonald, and eventually the finger went up. I think Samad Khan walked before he put his finger up, to be honest. Not sure exactly. I just had eyes glued on the umpire. He did not put his finger up at all until well after the event. Well, that's exactly what Tartars didn't want. Samad Khan, leading run score, Saturday Division 1, goes cheaply. Coming a look at the replay, or not, as the case may be. Having a look at all the nomads celebrating that's why farmer was so excited he was caught behind yeah farmer is very experienced campaigner you could tell from the way that he went up the way he was shaking the gloves he knew there was bat on it i'm not sure i think i'm pretty sure if i watch it back samad khan might have walked before royce mcdonald put his finger up Well, troubling times with the Tartars for Saeed to the crease. Tartars 28 for two, inside 10th over. And that's in the air, that's gonna be back-to-back -back wickets. He's hit it straight down the throw to backward point and Klein is on a hat trick. Tartars 28 for three. Well, Farouk Saeed has gone out there at number four and he finds himself gone for a golden duck. The poor batting of the last two Tartars matches seems to be continuing at least at this stage anyway in the 10th over he goes for a golden duck Klein who's been magnificent picks up another and finds himself on a hat trick it's 28 for three Ahan Trevetti coming out to face the hat trick delivery well just like that the Tartars very much on the back foot Nomads, just asking the question, two to go. Two to come in the over. Confirmation, the umpire's just checking to make sure they've got the right ball count. Umpire Troy Vashon nearly tripping on the mat there. Well, did trip on the mat, lucky not to take a fall. Oh. Break going backwards over the top of the... It's an old man. Don't talk to me about broken hips, Bushy. You tripped over a mat in your time? No, but I have broken a hip. Oh, I see. ready. Klein, back-to-back -back wickets. Went for four, bowled wide. Got a wicket, got another wicket. Now on a hat-trick. So Hahn comes forward, smothers the ball. Hands on heads from the slip cordon. So a whole Melvin car there. Ooh, how did that not get an edge through to me? Klein continuing to do very good stuff from the pavilion end. Full, fast, gets through everything. Not far away from another wicket. What an over from Klein. He gets two. The Tartars after 10, 28 for three, going at 2.8. The run rate required now up to 8.76, and they've only got seven wickets in hand, and we've talked about it all day. How brittle this Tartars batting lineup can be. We weren't sure about the idea to bowl first when the Tartars won the toss, but they elected to, and the Nomads 
went bang, bang, bang. Plus a few penalty runs, getting him up to 247. Carter's still requiring another 220 from here. Crazy numbers. With only 25 overs remaining. Char will continue into his sixth over. So far, one maiden, one for 15. Big, thick edge through about third slip. And it goes to the boundary for four. Aggressive this time. Devang. Didn't go where he wanted to, I don't think, but swung hard. Here's the pace of Shah. Well, he did whip the wrists on it, so it's more deliberate than I first imagined. needed boundary for the Tartars and this time down leg and he's got some on that but it will be cut off it is the man of the moment George Luke down there keeping it to a single everywhere man today George Well wide, called by umpire Shiroi. This one guided through similar region to where Devon got the boundary, but they had the protection deep third runs continuing to flow though seven runs off the first three legal deliveries good one for the Tartars so far these two now need to get through unscathed to the drinks break at 17 overs not really much else you could say well that's a confident drive but can't beat mid off but they will run on it and get another single yeah, that's right, Bushy. It's small targets now, isn't it? Get through the drinks, keep the scoreboard ticking over. Under nine and over. They've got to build a partnership, and it's got to be a big one. And they're more than capable of it, these two, no problem. Ciao. There's only one over remaining after this one. Here's a full one. Can't beat that extra cover fielder again. A voice... Just well placed fielders at the moment. Look, like they've got magnets on them. George is in the action as well, racing around it. Backward square to cut off fours. Racy orange boots. Build a partnership. One boundary and over. Just chip away at it. Don't lose wickets. That'll be the Tartar's plan. And that's another big thick edge through second slip just to the right of Melbourne Carr, another boundary. So handy runs, that over coming for the Tartars. 12 off it after 11. They are 40 for three. They require another 208 for victory. Yeah, a little bit streaky there from Trevetti, but he went hard at it. It was the right thing to do, and it went away to the boundary. A good over for Tartars there. They look to build some sort of partnership. Biggest one so far, only 22 12 already. This one, Bonsara now to face Klein, who's been nothing short of brilliant. Oh, really took off that one. Punches into the offside, he'll get one there, Balsara. And the George Luke right down in the boundary, the short boundary down there in the pocket he's fielding. Yeah. 
Swept there. Oh, throws out one left hand. Put down. It was a di very difficult chance, but I'm going to put that down in the book as a drop chance. Trevetti on five. Actually made good ground. He took three steps, three or four steps to his left. Trevetti swept into the leg side. Big dive. Got one hand on it. I think it's the Iceman there, is it? Oh, runs it off the face of the bat. One bounce into Saha Marvin Carr. That first slip. It's just trying to run it through a gully area. Went a lot finer. Trevetti goes over the offside this time. Doesn't get enough of it. He's gone. There's four down. Katata's 44 for four. Oh, Trevetti right in 10. Poor execution. Easy as you like. Caught at cover. Tata's in a world of hurt here. Klein's got his third. He's been brilliant. The drop catch didn't cost them at all. Cost them two runs and that's it. Same over. Trevetti keeps it up. He goes for seven. And it's falling apart here for the Tartars in this grand final at Caldon Cricket Club. Bolsara's out there still opening the batting. He's watching all the damage from the non-striker's end. As Niaz Ali comes in, the big hitting Niaz Ali. He'll only know one way. Anything loose, he'll go at hard. Comes together with Bolsara in the centre. Ali walking out with the big floppy on. He's going to face Klein. Klein the giant killer. Rip the heart out of the middle order of the Tartars. Going through the season and topping the comp. At the end of the season, the Tartars had 11 win, 11 played, eight wins and two losses. For 17, the Nomads were 11 win, 11 games played, seven wins, three losses, and a tie. The last two matches with the bat has just all fallen apart for the Tartars and then carried that through into this the final biggest match of the year and they just haven't been able to bring it so far 44 for four and he has Ali cuts behind point that's going to run away to the boundary for four I think Arian Chandramani running it down he can't get there it does run away for four 48 going at a run rate of four and we keep saying it as the batters keep falling over these two now need to build a partnership and it needs to be a huge one Klein a little bit short there, outside off stump. Niaz just puts him behind point for four. Beautiful stroke from Niaz. Yeah, it was. We're not seeing a lot of that against Klein, but... Just while you stepped out, Bushy, I don't know if you saw Ahan Trevetti being put down, being dropped. The Iceman, three steps to his left. Full dive, got a hand on it, put it down. Two balls later, Trevetti caught it extra cover. Well, there you go. Justice prevails for the Nomads. That man that's been in the action. That voice owns that position at the moment. Change of bowler, it is Ari and the Iceman Chandra Amani coming the into the attack. It's Iceman time. It's quick first off. Bolsara tries to pull, comes off the end of the bat, no run. Straight to Luke Boyce. Well, the grind's on from the Nomads now. They're taking wickets, regular intervals. Exactly what they need to go back to back champions in Saturday Div 1. Good Yorker length. A bit of aggression too from the Iceman. Keeping Bolsara in his crease. Yeah, keeping Bolsara honest there. Little shy at the stumps. Batter end. Top 
quite sure as Vash is just having a look, seeing if the Iceman's running on the wicket a little bit there, I think, pushing. Ready to go straight away. It's a short one in. That's been put in the air. One bounce over the rope for four. Didn't get all of it. Good enough to get to the boundary. Yeah, the fielder was a lot finer there than needed to be. It was a backward square. Balsara got it in front of square. Just one bounce across the rope, four. Much needed for the Tartars. A little bit too short there, the Iceman. Angling in. Hang on. Balsara pulls out. Complaining about something. I think he's complaining about the... <laughs> I think he's complaining about Troy Vasham moving, actually. the discussion there's no one down at the sight screen so that wasn't the uh, the problem yeah Zali's got a big smile on his face at the non-strikers end eases onto the leg side gets through for a single and he has back on strike 50 runs up for KCC Tartars with that boundary very experienced batters these two Bushy they'll know that they're well behind the game at the moment but they'll also know that if they can build a partnership and be out there at drinks come back after drinks regroup it's under nine and over yes you've got to do it over a long period but oh. Niaz Ali is so destructive if he can get going and he hit the winning runs against the Gap Ramblers and may have let the HKCC members know about it so <laughs> the nomads right. will be Forgot that. Uh, perhaps looking for a little bit of revenge. He's gone that guided stroke again, but that is going for four. I thought they were going to get there. No, he just middled it, didn't he? Yeah, beautiful stroke. There's a lovely function going up on top of the pool pavilion, which is um, very well populated by uh, people from HKCC as well. Oh. So uh, we'll see if maybe a couple of them return the favour to Niaz. But, uh, I'm sure there'll be some cheering jeering if he does lose his wicket but at the moment he's looking in good form no he is i mean he hasn't been in great nick lately no but i've seen him score hundreds here off 50 60 balls no problem yeah. he's, he's gonna need it today enormously destructive if he can get going tries to punch that one through backward point but hits it straight to the fielder no run it was well fielded actually fielded that inside out 13 overs gone the score is 57 for four the runs required at least under 200. Still needing another 191 runs for victory. That target is 248, not 247 as on screen. But 191 runs required. And they do well, the Tartars batters out there, just to not look at that total score and just think about runs per over. Pick up one boundary and over. A couple of singles. Okay, so we're four overs away from drinks. Where do you think the Tartars should target to get to? Climb well, I just, as I just said, forget the total. Don't worry yeah. about the total. Just pick up a boundary and over and a few singles and in 10 overs time, figure out where you're at and what you need. Well, this will be the last over we see from Klein. He's got a three for already. Six overs, one made and three for 21. He'll be bowling out from the pavilion end. Much as we've seen for most of the other six overs, shouldered arms outside off. He's been superb been absolutely wonderful this time bat on ball but tight infield on the offside brings it down to another dot big Hats. shout nay 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 from the Azali wasn't interested in the single at all there This one eased onto the leg side, so they will get through for a single. That's it. Now, Niaz has got to find a boundary here in the last three balls. Quite impressed with your Hindi there, Bottas. Well done. Nay, nay, nay. Served in Hong Kong long enough, Bushy. Shubba, shubba. Nay, nay, nay. Yeah. Clyde. Three balls left in his spell. Oh, chop down on it, straight to extra cover. Another dot. And this is where Niaz can be dangerous with the bat because effectively there's no pressure anymore when he's come in it with the scoreboard as it is. So he can just be himself. He's gonna, he's gonna come down. He's gonna crunch it hard, long. Can't get cut off by loop. That's a four. That's exactly what I'm talking about. 
exactly what I'm talking about. And there's the boundary that they need. They need one of them every over. Do that for 10 overs, a few singles around it, maybe an over where there's a couple of boundaries. I'm surprised we haven't seen more of this decline. Get to the pit to the ball. Risk of stumping, of course. Faster, harder, bang, six, big, big six. That has gone a long way and someone's going to have to go into the gymnasium and get the big broom poker bushy because that has landed right on top of the Sunlawn net. You that know the system to get the ball back. I do. It's convoluted. It's not straightforward, but it is doable. It's now KCC's ball. It'll stay up there and a new ball being run out to umpire McDonald. And just like that, Niaz has taken 10 off two balls. Fourteen overs gone. The score is sixty-eight for four. Hundred and eighty required now. Niaz Ali has faced seven balls and he's only two runs off the top score. He's on eighteen. He's chasing down Devon, who opened. Yeah. That's what they need. Needed That's a big hitter, just like the Nomads had in Luke Lossley. I mentioned it. It's he's come in with effectively no pressure on him. Devon now. Just wants to get a single, get Niaz on strike. Niaz is going to, luck needs to be his friend. Yes, yeah. no doubt about it. But if he can get a few away, just start to turn the wheels back over. Take a little bit of initiative back. That's the job of Niaz Ali now. Paul Watkins on YouTube saying, let's go Nomads. He'll be a happy man if he's a Nomads supporter watching. Very much so. The big score put on the board, plus four wickets down for the Tartars already. Lull while Iceman gets set. We get the new ball out there in the middle. Pulsara punches. They will get the single off the first ball. It's good cricket. Good cricket. We've had a very noisy Nomads dugout when they were batting. I'm not hearing a lot of noise coming from the Tartars. No, not at all. We didn't hear it in the field either, really. No, there was a distinct lack of enthusiasm out there. You it was the interpretation of mine, anyway. You're going to come around the wicket, the Iceman, to Niaz. So they've got a backward point on the ropes, deep cover, deep. Mid off and mid on inside the circle. Wide mid wicket. Bang. That's coming our way, but that filter I was talking about at cover will cut it off. Just a single. Over at Tinkwong Road Recreation Ground, the Lancers, top of the table versus the Tigers, who snuck in at the last moment, going to go up a division. They, the Lancers are 100 for five in the 22nd. Chasing 270 odd. Uh, now they're 100 for six to end the 22nd. Oh, that's got some bottom hand on it. There's a chance. Oh, it's been put down. Have to put that one in the books there, Bottas. It goes straight in. Bolsara on 21. Mm, it should have been taken a mid on. It's Char, it looks like. Put that one down off the Iceman's bowling. Brings Niaz Ali back on strike. Three singles to start the 15th. He tries to go huge. Has he got enough on this one? I don't think he has. Coming a long way around from cover. Deep cover. What a catch. He's caught that at deep point. And Niaz Ali has got to go. The fifth wicket falls for the Tartars. 71 for five. Yeah, that's a really, really good catch there. You can see Niaz, what he was trying to do, exactly what I was talking about. He was just going to go hard and go long and ride his luck. And he needed to ride his luck for an hour. He couldn't. He rode it for 10 minutes. Wonderful catch out on the boundary. You never guess who that was. Absolutely brilliant. It's Klein. Catch, it's Klein. Klein, I know. He's just he's just been an absolute superstar. Seven overs, three wickets. Now a magnificent catch to dismiss the extremely dangerous Niaz Ali. Shahi Samir now coming in. Again, a big hitter. But it's 71 for five. Needing, well, 170 odd still. 177 to be precise. Yeah, Just notice for the Nomads, Tom Miles has put the whites on. He's out there as 12th man. I think Brown went off. 
And then Browns come off. It's not listed on the team sheet. Tom Miles is definitely on the ground. Well, they haven't named a 12th man on the team sheet. It seems not. Another one, a very long list of people in Hong Kong who have been a coach of my son. Had to coach him in Hong Kong Cricket Club, under 13s. The Optimists. Very good coach, Tom. Nice bloke. Good to see him out there having a run around. Can somebody have a break? As you said, I think it's Toby Brown, is it? Yeah, it is. Speaking of injuries, I was talking to Philip Iqbal just earlier. Thinks he can bat. Possibly he's got a massive calf strain. He'll go out there if he has to. Yeah, he said it's not feeling good. It, he does not look good. Looks very poppy, but he'll do what he can. Did it with the ball, even though he pulled that calf muscle again. The Iceman gets his first wicket. Brings Samir to the crease. And a very quick single. Mum gets through safely. Well, Bossar is still out there and he's watched five of his friends fall. Well, we saw this the last game against the Gap Ramblers. They scored 70 to win. They bowled Gap Ramblers out very cheaply for 67, yeah, I think. Yeah, more than 67. But they still lost seven wickets doing it. Yeah. And they're on target to do something similar here, but chasing a much larger total. One ball left in the 15th. Straight back. A bit of a bobble misfield from the Iceman, but no damage done. Four runs and a wicket for the 15th. The Tartars are 72 for five. Still requiring another 176 for victory. Yeah, at a run rate of 8.75. It's doable. It's, it's extremely doable. It's that five, lost, five <laughs> lost wickets <laughs> is the problem. That's, that is the issue. That is the issue. So for the first time today, we're going to see a new bowler from the pavilion end as Klein has bowled out. Is it Melvin Carr? Could well be. I thought he still had a side strain, but if he's going to have a bowl, it can't be too bad. It is going to be Melvin Carr. not seen him bowl because the last time I saw him play he had the side strain so didn't bowl. He bowled with the glasses on I, I said. just saw him once. We probably can't see if he does it bushy. Glasses are important. Saw him bowl one day up the hill. Can't remember which team he was playing for whether it was Saturday or Sunday. There he is. I think the side strain Persists because he does normally bowl medium pace, right? Is no, no. Well, last time I saw him bowl spin. Yeah, because he had the side strains. Yeah. Well, that was so he's had it. that was like six months ago. Yeah, he's had it had it a whole season. He was on the podcast. You should listen to it. He's talking about his side strain. That's a wide and plus one valuable runs to the Tartars. Need another hundred of them. Two overs remaining until the drinks break. Tarnas cannot afford to lose another wicket before then. He floats that one up, Dev. Bossara just staying back in his crease. It's probably one where you can come down the wicket and take on the straight, the short straight boundaries. Saw Niaz do it, but he's gone. So he just eases this one up, three square leg for a single. It's really interesting to see Bushy that um, Nomads have gone with spin the whole time at the clubhouse end, and and you never see that. Yeah, you never see that here. It's like they're going, come on, take us on. And they flipped it on their head. And it's been brilliant. Waiting because the fielder wasn't in place. It was the twelfth man, Tom Miles, getting back on the rope. And he's going to get through the field there for a single, and he's hurt himself there. It's that diving. Onto the matting. That's the ice man, I think. With his collarbone. Yeah, it certainly is Chandramani in there. Short mid wicket. Full. Oh, good Yorker length in the end, but chops it out. 
Could be two in this one if they run hard. They're going to try for it. Put some pressure on the field and wayward throw. Oh, that was brilliant from Farms. Farms, wasn't it? Yeah, Dan Crowther's thrown that back in quite wide of the stumps. And Farms has taken a couple of paces and just flicked it out the back of his hand straight back yeah. on the middle stump. He didn't take it. He literally, as it came in, yeah. he's palmed it and flipped it straight on. That was very clever. They got back safely, but blimey, I've not seen that very often in cricket. Good cricket brain there from Farms. They move the field, we might actually get to see this full replay. Originally, Dev didn't think there was two and then pushed hard, pushed hard. Look at this. Oh, it's between the between legs. Between the legs. I didn't notice that first off. Oh, uh, west side on. That was brilliant. Back live. Another single. Seven runs coming from the 16th for the Tartars. They're 79 for five. Yeah, one over to come before the drinks break and... Nomads have got one hand on the trophy. Maybe one and a half. We've got the Tartar 79 for five. Chasing 248 for victory. And Balsara, he's doing his best opening up. He's 26 not out. He's still out there and he's watched Carnage from the other end. Change of bowl looks like Dan Crowther coming on from the bowling club end to bowl the last over before the drinks break. So the Nomads have both hands on that Saturday Championship Cup and the Tartars are going to have to try to rest it out of their cold, dead hands at the moment. Yeah, I think you're right. Friend of the podcast, Tom Ingram, coming back into the ground. He's got a smile on his face as well. From ear to ear, and why wouldn't you? Well, they've, they've earned this, the Nomads. They really yeah. have. I mean, they lost the wicket first, second ball of the match. Beautiful partnership. Rebuilt, slow, then accelerated through. Tartars fall back at the back end, but they're sort of as out of reach already as Crowther comes in to bowl his first ball. Full! Oh, got away with that one. That should have been put into our commentary position. Yeah, at a minimum, that was a four ball, arguably a six ball, but Bolsara probably surprised him a little, actually. Much like Luke Voice was yeah. surprised on the yeah. second ball of the game. That's right. Seen a few looseners today. Especially by the lot slower more bowlers from the Tartars. A lot more from the Tartars than we have from the Nomads. This one's a better length delivery. Chopped out onto the offside. We'll get the single. Sandra Marnie looks okay now after that shot. Well, he's still grabbing at it each time he's throwing in as well. It's his left sh collarbone area. Mm. Point of the shoulder. Wasp now just getting... Tartars a 2% chance of victory. That's quite generous. Oh, you're going to put some pressure on voice. And, oh, Shahi needs to be a little mindful that there are very good fielders out there. For yeah, the Samir, he thought he was going to go to the, the keeper end and he didn't. Left hand, left hander picked it up and threw it at the non-striker's end and Samir was a little bit lackadaisical. Almost caught napping. Devung back on strike. Just guides it through gully down to deep third. Another single. They grind their way towards the drinks break. Lose no more wickets in the last two balls. A couple of young fellows running around the boundary out there. If Troy Basher spots them, I think they're the Lee might boys. Might have a delay. It looks like the Lee boys actually. Obi and Remy. They're quite wise on the uh, rules of cricket. That one's guided again down off the hips. Miles does the fielding, another single. All right, just one bushy before the drinks break. Who do you think's on top here at the moment? Oh, I, uh, much like the computer, <laughs> which is now bumped up, it's gone up by 50%. Oh, yeah. Gone yeah. from two to three. Um, yeah, Nomad's commanding position. As we go to drinks, Bushy, who'd you tip in this final exclusively? Who'd you tip? Non-Nomads. Oh, that's on the pad. Oh, it's a, a big appeal chance. too. Yeah. And the finger goes up to take us into the drinks break disaster for the Tartars as they lose their sixth and it's the opener Devang Balsara out for 28 and we are going to take a drinks break here from Kowloon Cricket Club with the Tartars in the whole world of hurt 83 for six requiring another 165 runs for victory
Welcome back to Kowloon Cricket Club for the Cricket Hong Kong Saturday Championship Division 1 final. It's the Tartars top of the table versus back defending champions, I should say, HKCC Nomads. And as you can see on your screen, it's looking good for the Nomads, not so good for the Tartars. Just about finished the drinks break. Tartars six down, still requiring another 165 for victory. Not 164 as it says on screen, but I don't think it matters at this point. Will Walsh has come to the crease during the drinks break as we had a wicket on the very last ball before the drinks break. The opener, Devang Bolsara, out for 28. Aaron Bush with you. And joining me shortly in commentary, as always, Matt Potter's Botfield. Been a solid batting and now bowling innings from the Nomads in this final. Putting on a huge score, not giving too many chances. Perhaps the game would have been different if that catch in the third over was taken, caught and bowled, but Rosley survived, went on to get 46. Loop getting a century, his first of the season. And well past his best score of 82, not out. Now the wickets keep falling for the Tartars. Shahi Samir out there, joined by Will Walsh, who will be at the non-striker's end. Sahal Malvinka will continue from the pavilion end. Floats one, popped up in the air. Could this be a chance? Oh, one hand, one bounce. Good piece of fielding though. He's picked that up on the half volley. Attacked the ball well. Seen that from the Nomads botters. Great piece of fielding out there again. It was indeed. Bushy just in the break. I just ducked up to the uh, official function upstairs on top of the pool pavilion. Yes. Quite a nice crowd up there, I must say. Well. Still waiting for my invite. As we'll try to pull that on well the leg side. Both of us. It's an open door for both of us up there. I say it is quite a nice crowd. I mean by numbers, not by the reception I received. About some of the comments made during the podcast. Oh, really? Copped it from Tom Ingram. Again. It's been going all day at us. Oh, that's a good Yorker length from Sahal. And Will chops it out. The youngster. Anyone out there still watching? Go and have a listen to the 8 for 52 podcast on Apple and Spotify. It was quite a hostile reception. Really? Yeah. But that's all right. They've agreed they're coming on this week. Did you recognise Tom with his, like, clown nose on? Oh, that's well swept, but straight to the sweeper out there at deep square leg. So just a single, but nice off the middle of the bat for Will. Yeah, just one piece of advice to you is just steady up on those type of comments. <laughs> <laughs> There's the ice man coming back in front of us at deep point. Took a wicket earlier. Another good floats it and it drops right down into that Yorker length from Malvin Carr. Tidy over so far, just the two singles from it. And this time gets to the fall of the ball. Samir, but can't get the run. Two runs coming from the 18th. Tata's 85 for six. Yeah, another good one there for the Nomads. Run rate creeping up around nine and a half level. Run rate required. Uphill task here for the Tartars. Finished top of the comp after the league season. It was on the back of early wins, though. Really started to fall away for them. Well, the, the last, two, last yeah. two games, I mean, they got flogged. And then... Um, Fell, o fell over the line against the Gaff Ramblers after rolling them for 67. So, you know, we said it going in, and that's why I said it on the podcast, that why I just couldn't tip them on their, their recent form. And, and they brought that same form into this match, unfortunately, for them. Crowd to continue from the bowling club and lofted in the air. Oh, just managed to pick the gap between three fielders there, Walsh, and gets away with it. Gets probably three for a single. Yeah, gets away with it was the right way to describe it, I think. It was just chipped up over a shortish cover and Two other fielders were also thought they were in the game for a minute there for a catch. Another good delivery. Got a wicket already, just five runs. Got to give full credit to the defending champions. They've just brought their A game, haven't they? After losing, losing a wicket second ball after being sent in and then from that moment on, it's just been all nomads. Another bit of bottom hand poked out onto the leg side. Dribbles through. Melbourne car picks up. They get through for a single. 
160 to win, Bushy. 161. Well, it's 161 once it's corrected, yeah? Yeah. Not that it really matters. No, but if it was to get close, someone <laughs> needs to fix that scoreboard. This is true. We'll worry about that when we get there. That's lofted over the infield. Oh, Chandramani might have even got a finger on that he one. He did. He went at it inside out with his right hand. He got a hand on it. I mean, it would have been just beyond brilliant if he had taken it. Especially as he's got that little niggle in that left arm as well. From a diving accident earlier. Well, Walsh gets four. Walsh is not worried about going aerial at the moment. So they've pushed Chandramani back now. None on that. Run rate required, pushing towards ten now. Full on the pads, big appeal. Finger goes up. Well, Walsh is out, LBW. The seventh wicket falls for the Tartars. They're 91 for seven. Yeah, Bushy, I don't know if you noticed, but we're over here at square leg, and I gave that one before <laughs> Sheroy Vasher did, so it was pretty obvious that was going to be given out. That looked as plumb as you like to me on the monitor. Will Walsh has got to go. He skied one over the top of the ice man before. And, oh, back leg, I mean, that's plumb. That's plumb. Another hard decision for umpire Vasha. He goes. It's seven down for 91. There's still not triple figures, the Tartars. Well, they haven't got triple figures in the last two games. Oh, no, no, they go, that's 101. 101, the game before. Was it? Yeah, I think they got 101. Oh, yeah, that's right. They were about... When Jin Sung went past them in, like, the 22nd over or something. But they were, like, four for 40 or... Oh, yeah. Six for 40 or something ridiculous. Whether it was 101 or 120, they were still getting beaten. And they've been poor with the bat the last two games and they've brought it exactly for now. I just, you know, Tartars would be so disappointed. They've had such, they've had a, such a strong season and then they come in into the grand final, come into the back end of the season and put up one of their worst batting performances when Jin Sung beat them, fell across the line. And now here in the final, they just haven't been able to bring it.